Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Exhibition Centre in Liverpool. We are on the banks of the River Mersey, the city of culture, sports and music, and this year's host of the Boccia World Championships 2018. We've had a fantastic week here so far, and we've had some incredible games on the show court and around the exhibition centre which the team and pairs competition carries on into day two the stakes have now been raised as we look forward to the quarterfinals and the semi-finals but we still have some pool games to play this morning and you can just feel that excitement and tension raised up a notch this morning well to take us through our first game on show court this morning which will be the pairs BC4 game against China and Croatia. I'm delighted to say we are joined by Peter Maguire. And this one is a bit of an unexpected game in the sense that both sides have actually qualified through a group with Colombia and Croatia, Peter. Yeah, it was a kind of really hard group to get through. But this game yield the side two goes on top. So it's It'll be a great game. Do them, we want that spot. You know, we see get a kind of easier opposition in the knockout round. Looking forward to this one. It should be a cracker on show court. And just a reminder as well, coming up throughout the day we have four games live for you. After this we'll have Australia versus Great Britain in the pairs BC3. We'll have a BC3 pairs quarter final coming your 130 and to round things up the pairs BC3 semi-final at 430 so we are certainly working our fray way through the competition but we still have some pool matches and a lot of results mean so much all to play for them for all nations this morning it's great to see Zeng out there again it's so cool he showed us we could do a couple of days ago in the, the final and the individuals. Uh, with these extra dynamics out in the mix of the partners here, let's see what he can do. Let's see if he can get on top. Well, Croatia 
We've had a fantastic tournament in the pairs BC4 so far. In the group with Colombia and Brazil. Colombia ranked fourth in the pairs BC4, whereas Brazil are ranked number five. And a resounding victory for Croatia with a 7 3 win against Colombia. Uh, much tighter affair against Brazil. For China, it was a 3 2 win over Colombia. And a thumping of Brazil, 8 0. So. Some big wins for both these sides against some much fancied opposition. It was. Great upsets in this competition. I mean, Brazil have been world class, <coughs> Paralympic champions since, oh God, we're going back to Beijing. So, <coughs> yeah, it's amazing. We saw some fantastic games on the show court yesterday. An incredible game to finish us off between Portugal and Brazil in the pairs BC3. Who would have thought a stool would create so much drama, Peter? Yeah. And Brazil had a reprieve and through the tie break have managed to stay in the competition. So we'll keep you up to date with a fascinating pool A in the BC3s. But our attention is on the BC4s this morning. China and Croatia already qualified. But I'm sure they'd love to get a a third win in the group and keep the momentum going and it's so important Peter with, especially with the how short the competition days are that you win your all your games and keep the momentum going yeah right from the start you have to get that momentum I mean with things coming to you thick and fast uh, you can't really afford to really lose it really affects you Strange here, seeing Davos and very back in the box, kind of warming up. Usually, I have three players right to the front, jostling for position. Big friend, the giant. Great gentleman. Call ball from the player. It's Melissa. Uh, just going through the handshakes and we'll run through the teams out on court for you for Croatia and we have their highest ranked player Davor Komar and Melissa Osmanovic on the far left and for China we've already mentioned him the BC4 individual champion Yu San Sen Zheng First look at Yu Zhang Zheng. And it will be China to throw first this morning and place the jack. How important is it, Peter, for Yu San Sen to use all his experience that he's obviously built up in his career and the win he's got in the BC4 as individual and give that advice and experience to his teammates as well? It's very important, and the thing that's worrying me here right now, looking at this setup, is with Zeng right in the middle of the opponents. I mean, the two of them can easily block him out of the game. So I thought they would actually play him wide and just keep the uh, things open for him. It's got to be fun here. Huh? Here we go. The start of day six of the Bisfed Boccia World Championships is underway. Three metres for China, wanting to go short. Great angle. Just took them both out. Nominating for Davo to go. Box the I think should be a left handed shot. Usually the players going uh should be the wide wide players. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna make a good effect in that impact. To be a couple of balls. 
Yeah, the start from China just hampering Croatia. It was a, a throw that really blocked off the angle for Osmanovic, but Dabo has the better look at it. Got it. That's a bit better from Davo, number eight in the BC4 rankings. He'll be the man that Croatia look to. Now, Melissa coming in from this angle, just to be really precise. She can take out Zheng, he's sitting between two Croatians. A lot harder to get rid of that. <laughs> and one point picked up yesterday, of course, Yu San Sen has played all the way in his comp in his individual competitions, and then had to straight away take part in a team and pairs competition. Well, the pairs competition. Mm -hmm. Surely that fatigue will hamper him later on in the tournament. You'd think so, but. He's trained a lot for this competition, I'm sure. He's, he's uh, fatigue levels wouldn't be like that yet. Of course, as always, we'll keep you up to date with these scores from around the courts. Great Britain in action this morning in the pairs BC4 up against Portugal. Just plopped down. Very nicely done from Zheng. Saw the gap between the two balls there and went for it. Yeah, it was always going to happen unless you actually got that pin perfect in that angle. It's getting worried about me. Want go have a look? He should go and protect that front blue, I think. Just push it up. Hit and sit, as we call it. Just keeping your ball placed in amongst them. If not, Zeng, you should take it out and hold it right up later on in the game. Really needs his ball to stay in here when he does this. Just a reminder that there are four ends in the pairs competition, just like the individuals, and only five minutes per end per pair. Okay, mm. it's a little work to do, but it's good staying in there. Communication is key in the Pairs and teams competition. Will be Osmanovic to go next. Oh, oh that is good. Fantastic from Melissa Osmanovic. The best shot of the day we've seen in this show court. Maybe two to blue. There it goes again, the profiterole style. Yeah. You don't get chocolate till the end. <laughs> oh, can. You Sansen reply. Smash open. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at the power on that. From Yu San Zheng Zheng, the BC4 individual champion, showing his experience. It's just changed totally. Now it's too red. And now we've only Croatia having one ball left in this opening end, so advantage China. Can't you see this blue to knock on? You need something big in this first end already, do Croatia. As Manovic, the pressure. Thank you. 
Not the desired effect that she wanted, and that is really opened things up now for China. Yeah, it's got here, Dan. Accumulate a little bit more points. Zhuang to throw next. Lovely from Zhuang there. Three. Tell those are well used balls here. Shane's really come off. Durang. Added to the pressure on Croatia already in this first end, and it's looking like a 3 0 lead, but it could be more. Think make on top. Yeah, you can see what he's trying to do. Zen could push it in. It might be four. It might be four. It's a measure. It's, uh, it certainly is. There we go. It's five now. That pushed that red on. There we oh. go. Fantastic Lovely. shot. Yeah. It's a shame it actually made contact with that blue also. Pushing it closer. Which way you look at it, it's a great start for China. seen a perfect score yet very close yeah this morning our referees for this one Poland Pauline Sang. It's a main decision. Let's get confirmation from the referee. We know it's going to be a good start for China. Let's see how many it, it is. Five. What a start for yeah. China. <laughs> Almost a perfect start, six points. It's really hard. And really that hard. all came down from the power from Yu San Zhen Zheng. Looks like he's not woken up yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's playing like that, half asleep, then the rest of the competition have someone to fear. Yeah. Let the creature stick with the game plan they had. I don't think so. You have to go really aggressive every game then. Every ball. Need those points back. The only thing, of course, in their favour is they know they've qualified, of course. But they'll want to finish off strongly. Yeah, it's good to tell me who we've got to play in the next round. Let's see how Croatia can respond after a deflating first end. Four metres for Davo. Of Croatia will let to go long in the final end after seeing what Zeng did in his individual game. There's incredible stuff up the back. It was a 
was a terrific performance against the Colombian Grisales. Overcooked it. Yeah, wind of the mark. Seem rattled the Croatians. Far away one to go. Usually we nominate the closest uh, player with a clear view. And Zeng take out both. Just one ball also. Even if he's not perfect. Oh. And that's why. That was good. That was lovely. From Zhuang. Nestled it right next to the jack. Unless he's getting angry to knock this up again. We'll see from this first ball how the Jack from Croatia will react. Of course, they'll know it and how it will play. she needed to do and open it up just another thing of note as well in the pairs and teams competition as soon as you've thrown the jack in your first ball there's no particular order when you need to throw as no. well so as long as you've got a ball you can play so we scream about this sport as well Def dynamics that comes in with the order of play changing all the time. Oh, very nice. Yeah. For that first ball comes into play again. It missed the jack. Come up. Spon the response from Croatia. Saw the round of applause from Melissa Osmanovic. Wow. Here we go again. <laughs> Great power. And just unfortunately, spinning that blue ball stuck with the jack. One of his partner can actually see them. White ball now. Going left handed. That was good. The power he generates is incredible. Is that He's such player? an asset. Yeah, it's a baseball player. It's <laughs> over 100 kilometers an hour. Zoom. Must be so hard for opposition to compete with that power. And what an asset it is for China. Oh, spot on. Fantastic. From Zhuang. We haven't seen him in the individual competition, but he's showing what he's made of here. Grace is in trouble here. Really, you get a block of a block. Double blocker. If we get to that jack. You just have to minimise. No. You cannot lob that out. Minimise, but not going to lose. That's me. Yeah, I think Melissa's got to go here. Yeah, she's just setting up. Get the line. Oh, it's going for that. 
He's gone for the red. And if anything, just nudged it further in the line of Joang. I have to really hide that Jack ball now. An update from court 12 and good news for Great Britain. They lead 2-0 in the pairs BC4 against Portugal. Just too heavy, yeah. Really need one front now. Zeng those two balls. That's ball remaining for Croatia. About. Maybe the timer wasn't going. That's why he just didn't move at all. You don't want to throw the ball when the timer isn't going. You just get that ball took away from you. Well, he's rolled it short, but it's potentially a, maybe a blocker. But what we do know is that it will be, as it stands, another point to China. Zen can actually see that blue ball close to the, the jack, so I think he'll try and knock that out first. Create a bigger scoring circle from both of the next balls. Overhead, there we go. Oh, on a pin, pinpoint accuracy from Yusan Zen Zheng. Just now there's a gap for Trying to target. Right, <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, look at that. Week three. This is exhibition stuff from China. Mm, maybe three. There was a quick throw from Zheng straight after. Yeah. Like the flash, we didn't actually see him through it. He's nestled it in there, so three definitely, but we could be looking at potentially four, but the measurements probably will need to be out to have another look. The referee's already made up her mind. That was pink there, was that four or three? I think it was three, but <laughs> she's <laughs> made it tricky for us. do know is China have already won the game with two ends to go which yeah. is the first time we've seen on show court this week it really has been a fantastic performance from China right on the money so far really clinical and strong every ball that we've seen 
and one's counted so far. One of those angle elected to his jackpot now. Same place, just right in front of his partner. A little bit further. Next to the tram lines. Just to go long and very tight to those. Seven, seven and a half. First mistake we've seen from Chan this yeah. morning. He was a lot quicker than what he has been. Other shots. I think because of the points accumulating now, he's getting too relaxed. Always sweaty palms. <laughs> Probably careful though of his share that he's not overhanging the line. Yeah, just double checking. Yeah, can overhang as long as you don't touch the line itself. If a chair that extends five meters, you set the edge of it as long as it doesn't touch. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like a blocker for Komar. Great angle, just too short. for Melissa to try and push this up now. She has to really hit it square on. She doesn't want to hit it. To left or right. We'll open up again. isn't there, just special things. Looks like it's going to be Komar again, initially. Melissa Osmanovic looked like she was going to throw, but confidence, like Peter said, is playing a factor. Oh, you got it. Oh, well, that's a good response from Komar. <laughs> Zeng is really taking out the game with those double blockers there. His partner just has to push this back just a little bit. Chris will really struggle here. Zeng's got the better angle on this one. Clear size of the jack. Power. Oh. That was too much power. He didn't have to go like that. Just had to push it around a little. He lost his control there. Did Zhuang. Take about 50% of the power off of that shot. Trying to match Yusan Zen for the speed, but the accuracy wasn't there. He's opened it. He has opened it. Um, it's a better shot, at least it's on target this time. Confident now, laying in here. He's given himself the blue to work with as well. No, oh, just held on to it too long there. Pulled it across his body. Come back the other way. I think Zen can still see it. It's better this way. Can you Sansen respond? Well, they've certainly surrounded the Jack, but it is Croatia. Closer. 
Well, that looks a bit better. Too much power. You have to be really careful now, Croatia coming in here. They want to push that jack back. That isn't their jack ball, so it'll be a lot unfamiliar how it react. Those two balls kind of helped Croatia come in off. done for Mosmanovic. Little movement from the jack but meets the overhead how it lies there. She can nudge the ball to the right out of the way. Some measure now. I'm just asking I think. Getting here again. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Really nicely done from Osmanovic. And they're rallying back, Croatia. The game might be gone. A score from court 12 involving Great Britain. They are currently 3 0 up, needing two points in difference to secure their place in the quarterfinals. So, an important start for Great Britain on court 12, where your brother. Stephen, yep, he's there with yeah. Louis Saunders. Will he get on top? Up? Oh, yeah. Ball there. Yeah, that red just moved there. I think it's now two. Nice ball from Croatia. This is a bit of a rally. She goes for it. Lands on top. Just climbed the wrong end. <laughs> so it looks like it'll be two for Croatia. So they'll take comfort from that after a poor opening two ends. And they'll need the perfect round in the final end to force it to a tie break. Such points. <laughs> <laughs> it would be some comeback if they could yeah. pull this one off. If you get these six points, I'll get the medal myself. <laughs> right there, man. This thing, it's an incredible point. Confirmation from the referee. Two blue. Two blue. Two blue. So we're going to the final end. As it stands, China 8, Croatia 2. And barring a miracle, that will be the win for China. Wonder where they'll put this final jack there. It's discussing right now. Usually, if you're discussing like that, you're changing tactics. 
Well, I want to try something different and test out China. It would be good for future opponents also in this tournament to actually see if they can find a weakness in this China. So exposing it to anyone else really helpful. to score from the other game in this group between Brazil and Colombia. It's going to be 2-1 to Brazil, although it doesn't mean much as China and Croatia have already qualified. for Osmanovic so first time we've seen a long jack in this game so far on Chocourt might just be 8 metres from Melissa there but it's a lot further again from the other side of the court in box 2 yes you judge well there we go See that. That's good. Good weight. Just the angle's a little off. See how it responds. Shows a nice point point. Six point to head right now. Jean will be taking confidence from this first game and I'm sure would love to add a couple more points in this final end. Held on too long, fell short. He's done that a couple of times in this game. Yeah. Peter. Early yeah. ups. I think he's no. blocking his uh, partner as well. Zenk here. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of falling short. That's when you'll have to put some more into that. Again, the line was much better, but just not getting that power to get it there. Frustration sitting in there, not happy at all. A good experience for him, just to see how he plays the long game under the pressure of the World Championships. Right, We've seen the power already from Zhang. Almost there, another hit. We can squeeze through them. I don't know, mate, to push that ready yet. I'll be trying to go again. He's such an explosive player, as you said, yeah. Zen Jenk. That's the right option. Because Croatia again have to get all six balls in there. Just put a good bunch of reds in there. Just hit them up with your final ball. Match length of this game is 35 minutes. It's pretty quick. Pair to others. It appears. Oh. Yeah, you can see he's really trying hard to get the power, but then his radar is off as well. Oh, his wrist there. I think he's going to hurt himself, maybe. He's not happy at all. Maybe in the earlier shot, he's kind of pulled something. It's affecting his last three throws here. Can happen, yeah, he's in pain. He should have sorted him out earlier. Great shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. A nice shot from Yusan Sen Zhang. What the hell they manage now? Uh, one of the players holding an injury. 
Doesn't look good for Yu Shang Zheng. As you see, they make every ball count. You have to play what's in front of you. Let's not think about anything else. Going with that, yes, I can attitude. Yeah, anything's possible. Well, even if they don't win the game, they would love to reduce that deficit yeah. going into the knockout stages. And they've certainly got the chance to do that. They've elected to go this far. <laughs> Pass there. No, oh, just touched that. Not enough power from Osmanovic there. Need both line and pace to achieve that outcome there. A lot of pace. Let's see what Komar can produce for Croatia. Straight through the gap, but too much pace on that one. Yeah. Very hard to get through that gap as well. I managed to get through there, just put too much on it. Fourth ball we played now. This time it takes thing to be in now. Two balls remaining for Croatia. Another point to the tally. Aiming for that gap. Oh, it's just gone wide. Side, yeah. So, our final ball of the first game on show court. And give the point away. Try to. One point added to China, and that is our first game done and dusted on show court this morning. It's a superb win for China against Croatia. Very clinical performance from China. The, a lightning start in the first two ends and put the game to bed, really. Every ball China threw the first half was very effective and strong. It's just later on when they picked up an injury. You know, still holding his arm there. Yeah, see how they cope. You can see him wincing, couldn't you, as soon oh. as he put his arm up. But the power of Yu San San Zheng is too great for Ch for Croatia. He can just try to match his partner with power. Pull that muscle. Let's have a look at the Match summary, China putting in a fantastic display there in the... Yeah, they always had balls two. left, you know, three balls left, three balls left, the first and second end. And then once they were comfortable, you can let Croatia just have the balls at the end, try and catch something. 
Well, a fantastic start for China. A few highlights here of what has been a great match on show court. China being clinical throughout. Well, next up on show court, it's time for Great Britain to take their place on the show court this afternoon. In the pairs at BC3, Great Britain take on Australia. That'll be coming up in 40 minutes' time. We have two more matches as well this afternoon in the BC4 quarter final and the BC3 semi final. But please do stick with us for Australia against Great Britain in the pairs BC3. But next up, we have an exclusive interview with David Smith. We caught up with him after he won his BC1 gold medal. And he was particularly delighted, of course, with the result. And he is playing in the team competition. So it's David Smith, BC1 gold medal champion. Well, first of all, congratulations, David. And how did your preparation through the semi-finals and the quarter-finals prepare you for the final? Um, I think it was just we had um, we had a plan for every opponent. I've always, you know, uh, I've always got like a game plan. I know where they pretty much take me, or we're always checking in warm-ups to see where they're going and all that sort of stuff. So, um, but I tend to focus on myself. Um, I know my game's strong enough to be able to compete. Um, so, I mean, but having a kind of rough ride through the semi and, uh, and the quarters. Um, it kind of gets you in the right frame of mind. Um, and particularly the semi, which was a really tough game, and I thought I played quite well in it. Um, it gave me the confidence to go into the final knowing that I was competitive. Um, and yeah, it, someone was going to have to play well to beat me. Um, and yeah, I, I don't think he, once he realised I was on form, I think he kind of it, it, it got to him more than it got to me. Well, Kai, of course, beat number two, Daniel Perez, in the semi finals. So it must have been a different sh a shock when you thought you might have been playing Perez, but then playing Sun. Um, well, going on form this year, um, not really. Um, Dan's been struggling quite a lot this year in terms of where he's finishing. He's he's finished fourth quite a few times over the year. Not obviously not to not being beaten by the Chinese guy, but just generally he's not quite been there. Uh, he's been beaten by the third seed a couple of times because of how the draw comes together. Um, obviously, the third seed didn't get through this time because he got beaten in his pool stage by that China China Chinaman. So I was thinking, well. You know, if he beat him, then he's probably going to beat Dan as well. So I, I wasn't totally surprised when it happened. I mean, it would have been nice to play Dan again, but um, you know, he, he obviously needs to raise his game a little bit. Um, and and actually, the, uh, the the China guy, he had a jack position that was quite similar to Dan's in a way. Um, and it, so for me, it wasn't really a change. It was just having a new. It was just like having a, a China Dan. It, 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 the game plan was exactly the same. Just move him around a little bit, hit the balls as hard as I can, and yeah keep them guessing and world champion now in the BC1 you'll be looking to add another gold in the pairs over the next couple of days um, well actually I play in a team um, so uh, so you know, there won't be any pairs work for me um, but um, no so I play in the GB team we're we're quite a new team so apart from myself as Will and Claire who are quite fresh to the, to the group the team's gone through a little bit of a transition since uh, sort of Rio with people retiring and coming back in so in terms of our ranking we're probably ranked 12th at the minute so I think for us, a top eight finish would be a good result. So I think we would take one game at a time. We, we obviously we want to try and get that first win um, in the pool, and then you can relax a little bit, and then you know get the second win, and then you're out the pool. Um, but it's got to be one game at a time. The team is a totally different kettle of fish to the individuals, primarily because there's so many good players across all the categories, and you've seen the way last week the standard of all the individuals has been superb. So it's kind of the team game is like that again, um, and so. You know, we've all only got two balls. So you, as as an individual, you do as best as you can. But it's how you work together as a group. Um, we've got a good team spirit, and we've got we work we really do support each other well. So that helps. Um, but again, it, it, the courts are quite quick and all this sort of stuff. So it'd be interesting. Um, but whoever whoever wins it will deserve it. I think Thailand are still the favourites, um, and then probably Brazil and um, who else is in that lot? Brazil and. Uh, uh, Japan, there we go, Japan. Yeah, that's the team. Um, are probably the, the three that you would imagine would get the medals just because of the strength and depth they've got in their teams. Um, but we know that we can give them, on our day, we can give all of them a game. Um, so we just need to turn up every single game, just improve that consistency that we've been trying to do this year. And we've had some better results. So we're just trying to keep building that consistency. And if we can get like, get the first win, 
we got a chance. So. Well, congratulations, David, and look forward to seeing your progress over the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. 
Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or a system device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get a, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls. And the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball's thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets 
six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as bull or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. 
The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials. The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported, work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. 
they couldn't do any other sport. But yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Watcher was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Watcher balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication so there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. We play with um, leather balls, so, um, they're quite soft, yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackpot, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side, whose ball is not nearest to the jack, throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. 
individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court. And as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia. 
Archer is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin.
Exhibition Centre in Liverpool. It's the BISFED 2018 World Boccia Championships. And this is live coverage of our second day here on day six of the championships. And what a game we have in store for you as we turn our attention to the BC3 pairs classification. And our final group game of Pool C. Australia against Great Britain. It's set to be an intriguing match. Both sides already qualified, but they'll want to finish top with Greece potentially on the horizon in the quarterfinals. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Scott McCowan, and we've been talking off air of just how crucial this game could be for Great Britain. Yeah, this is a massive game, and I can already tell you that the stomach is churning this morning. But attention, and I'm not even on the court, because it just highlights how big a game this is. Two great friends, great rivals, Great Britain and Australia. And yet, obviously both these teams through already, with two wins each. So this game decides who wins the group, and that could have an important, could play an important factor in the tournament, because it decides which opponent you play in the next round. And we know that that is going to be the, the Greece-Russia uh, game. So it's going to be interesting. We'll keep up to date with that other game in Pool D between Russia and Greece, as they are the opponents that await either Australia or Great Britain. Let's have a look at how the two teams line up on court today. Starting on the far right, Spencer Cote. Saw a lot of him in the individual championships. And then second from the right, Jamie McCowan, number two in the BC3s. Play a pivotal role in this Great Britain side. Next up to the left of him as we look on our screen, is Daniel Michel who claimed the bronze medal in the individual championships in the BC3s. And then on the far left, Patrick Wilson for Great Britain. So it, a really strong lineup and it m makes up for what will be a fantastic game. Yeah, they're both evenly matched. Uh, Australia and Dan and Spencer have already appeared on the show court, which may be a factor. This is uh, Patrick and Jamie's first time. But they were speaking last night about how excited they were to be on the show court. And yeah, there's not a lot between them. It's always close. Uh, the last meeting was in Montreal back in April. Uh, and uh, I was in the, the pair at, in that particular tournament. That went all the way to the drama of a tie break, which luckily we won. But uh, it's got the potential to go all the way today. And both teams know exactly how important it is and they'll be able to see the other court where Russia and Greece are playing, so they'll know the importance of this result. Well, looking at the results so far for Australia and Great Britain, you already know they're through. Australia recorded a fantastic victory over Singapore, 12-0 win, and they also recorded an 8-0 win over Colombia. So they are yet to concede a point so far, Australia. It was Great Britain, they thumped Colombia 9-1 and 
And it was a much tighter affair against Singapore as they came out 5-4 winners. Yeah, we thought it was going to be a comfortable victory in the, the end against uh, Singapore. Uh, and in fact, we didn't have any idea of the drama that had unfolded in the last end. Where in fact, by all accounts, there was a possibility of a five for Singapore and a potential tie break. So out of nowhere, Great Britain were looking a little bit concerned. But thankfully they got the job done and it sets up this mouth-watering game. It certainly does and there'll be another nail-biting game as well involving Great Britain, but this time in the team competition. David Smith and co coming up against Colombia. We'll keep you up to date with that one as that takes place on court six. But all our attention is on the pairs BC3 and Australia versus Great Britain. And here's Australia who will place the jack first. Yep, and as expected, Australia start with the short jack, which is their usual starting position. Four metres for Spencer. Although not necessarily four metres, of course, for Patrick Wilson on the far side. No, that's correct, and it can make quite a difference, uh, particularly when you play wide in the court. Uh, the distance that players have to face from one box to the other. And that's why when you go through your uh, warm-ups in the days prior to the tournament, in terms of mapping out your calibrations uh, of how fast each ball is going to go, you have to factor in the different boxes you may be in in both events. Spencer plays the first ball. And it's a very good start. Nicely done from Spencer Cote of Australia. And that is a very soft ball that they open up with. And it's actually an advantage to leave it short of the jack when it's at a great angle. Because when you hit it into the jack, it tends to absorb the power, and make it harder to move. Also, they, that particular ball will not... Um, cut to the side too well tends to go quite straight whenever you hit it so setting the tone with that opening ball looking to break the part and create an angle you see there there was enough of an angle or enough of a space to allow it to be played off the jack and bounced to the side but it didn't move a lot that's a good start from Jamie. You'll be happy with that. Yeah, better sight at the jack now for Jamie McCowan. And the world number two and current European champion will want to respond here with a ball on the jack of his own. How do the other players in the team, Patrick Wilson and Jess Hunter, they must really look to Jamie for all his experience in the GB side. That is a great ball. Fantastic. And McCowan Roar coming out there. The cry from Jamie McCowan. He's delighted with that one. Perfect start. And yet, uh, as you said there, obviously Jamie has, uh, in the last two years particularly, been on a remarkable run. But he has a lot of experience because actually, for those that don't know, Jamie was a BC4 originally. And when he lost the strength to throw the ball due to the nature of his condition, he transitioned to a BC3. So he is actually very experienced in the sense that he's been around a long time in Boccia. But obviously Patrick has the greater experience in the BC3 division. And he has the armband in this pair. How much work, Scott, goes into that transition from going from a... BC4 player to a BC3, especially having to judge the, the pace of the ramps. Yeah, well, it's something that has happened from time to time, but not many players have done it internationally. Um, and it, it was a very difficult thing for him to do. He had to spend a lot of time training on his own, learning, being getting frustrated. But it took about a year. Solid work. That's a good shot by Dan. Good reply from Australia, just opening up a gap there between the red and the blue. That leaves a lovely target in there. 
Bit of an awkward angle actually for Patrick Wilson on the far left with that red ball. What a start to this game. We knew there'd be some fantastic play and we're already seeing it in the early stages in N1. And as I say, both pairs will have went to bed last night expecting a game just like this. They know the quality of their opponents. So this won't be a surprise to them. It's an unusual position to be in in the sense that you know you've already qualified, but you still have to keep up that intensity to win to make sure you don't face Greece, potentially, in the first knockout round. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a number of things that go into this kind of game. Yeah, first and foremost, you want to win to, to try and get an easier draw, but also you want to win from a momentum perspective, keep things uh, carrying on. You don't want to lose that momentum because it's very hard to get it back. Uh, but yeah, not only that, the competitive nature of the players alone, you just want to win every game you're involved in. And look at that from Daniel Michel. Yeah, he was hoping that the ball they played would get closer, but in fact it's the other one. He did aim for the gap and he got it through. And that red is in front of the jack now, so they've got the control of it. And that's the key thing. Tough position for Great Britain now. Patrick's going to play this. First look at Patrick Wilson on the show court. Yep. The world number eight. Who finished uh, third in Pavoa last time out. And he's shown a remarkable consistency in the last two years in terms of positioning to not fall out of the top eight at any uh, championship in individuals prior to this event, beginning in Rio, but uh, just not been able to to get uh, to as many finals as Jamie, but has picked up quite a few bronzes. And he's going to probably try and get this opened up on the left side as we look at it. making sure of that release. Very important. Yeah, especially when he's coming from an angle. Just taking his time, Patrick Wilson. Just to remind you that it is four ends in the pairs and it, they have seven minutes per pair. Yeah, end. and in the BC3 category, the pairs are often made up a combination of athletes with cerebral palsy and athletes without. Patrick obviously has cerebral palsy and Jamie does not. And that's a key difference, particularly in that shot with the release, because due to the involuntary muscle contractions that the cerebral palsy athletes have, it can be very difficult to remain still and connect with that properly, whereas the non-cerebral palsy athletes would have less problem with that. One of the fascinating aspects of these games. Australia also have that with uh, Spencer, compared to Dan. And they've done well there to get that jack closer to the blue, forcing Australia back in. There's also a, a gap in between those two reds as well. Yeah. Potentially for Patrick. When it looks like Spencer's going to try and shut that gap down by promoting the red. I think I might be noticing a little bit more extra caution in the assistance chairs like we saw <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, that was absorbing, that game. And if you don't know what we're talking about, it was a fascinating game between Portugal and Brazil. 
where in the first end there was drama where the assistance of Dolivera's chair was touching over the line. And that hasn't worked out fully, I don't think. Mm, done the job. Just mm. got closer. Might have. No, nope, my mistake. That is actually exactly what he wanted. Didn't look like it was touching from the previous camera angle. But you see there. Covered the jack. Well, neither side in this first end has had a chance to have a good run, has had a run of balls. It's been going back and forth. And they're having a chat about this now. And he actually mentioned yesterday, Scott, about Portugal and Brazil in terms of the language. No language barrier, really. In this case, it's exactly the same. There's no language barrier. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that can be a factor because obviously you're talking about tactics, you're talking about what they're going to do, they can hear you. But it also creates an interesting dynamic in the sense that what you say can affect your opponent position. So sometimes the language you use can increase the pressure on the opposition. You can try and almost hype up the importance of a shot that they're going to have coming up with what you say. That can be interesting. Patrick Wilson going for the extended ramp. Yeah, I think he's going to try and split the red and the jack. Hopefully get the jack across again, closer to that blue. That's it. He's pushed the jack back. And he's actually um, hit that a little too well. That's a bit unfortunate. Because you'll see there that the red is now back behind the blue which makes it harder to knock the blue to the jack they've created a wall around the jack as well Australia so this will take up time and they haven't got enough balls really and that goes back to what I was saying yesterday about the difficulty in knowing how much power is required you want to make sure you make it and Patrick will have expected that maybe to not have moved as far The ball tally now equal. Which always makes up for a more interesting game when it's an equal tally. Yeah, that's correct. Who will be first to take the initiative? Oh, that looks like a very good shot. That's played into the hands of Jamie. Crucially. They want to be further away here. They don't want to give Australia a chance to get it back because that ball could be promoted to the jack now. Which it looks like they are. Yep. Fantastic they work. Love that. And I can't tell you how good a shot that is. Patrick will have been deliberately trying there to not put that closer and just position it for Jamie round the red. That's what I said with that ball, the jack moving back. Jamie couldn't get a straight line at it, so Patrick had to position it for him. Thinking a couple of shots ahead. Key in this game. Now this is end ball. GB get this. I think they'll win the get the end, sorry. Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> We'd like to think that. We'd it'd be fantastic if they could. Oh. But it'd be a great start nonetheless if they could win this first end. And we can't quite see how close that is. Jamie didn't look overly impressed. I've got to say it doesn't look too close from our position. We'll see shortly, hopefully. What can Australia do? They've got those two reds on the left that can promote. And if that blue is not touching, which we think it is, not touching, then they'll be able to get them up the side to score. Two balls remaining for Australia. That really was a crucial shot.
chance for Spencer Cote to make a real inroads. Oh, he slightly nudged it, and it looks very even, although it could be just by a whisker. Yeah, so that really wasn't the shot Jamie was hoping for when you see it there. Not anywhere near close enough. But I can't believe that um, they didn't give that enough, Australia. That's oh. actually in the way now for Dan. It's almost like they are the ones who really win the point. Yeah, they've got quite a big scoring zone there to hit both of those balls in. There's no need to be light on it. But he might be able to push all three of these in now if he hits it right. <laughs> oh, he's nudged it and he's nudged it close up. So that had the desired effect that Australia wanted. And they've taken the lead in going into the second end. Only a slender advantage, but in a game that seems like it could be tight. Although that could be the commentator's curse. But every point counts. Australia that have it. And actually in a strange sort of way, um, both teams had a chance to take that end there. Great Britain really should have got the the ball, the short ball pushed on. But in Australia had a chance to maximise it. Really wasn't taken very well. So both teams would be a little annoyed with that. But I would say Great Britain have the momentum just by the fact that it could have been a lot worse. Jennifer Larson, the referee in charge of proceedings. And just some updates from around the courts and focusing on our other Great Britain side in the team classification. Currently 1-0 up against Colombia. And the coaches have come in for the team talk now. Between ends, Great Britain coach Glenn and Australia coach Kent. And they've been doing this for number of years now, very experienced. It's now a chance for Great Britain to place the jack. So they'll be quite happy that it's only one. You'd expect that from an opponent's jack. Can they take the advantage now? Both players breaking the plane of the ramp at the same time before the end begins, which you have to do. Again, so that you can't save time and set up prior. And they'll be going for a longer jack than Australia. Five metres for Great Britain. Yep, so what they'd be wanting. You see there in line with the cross, which is the usual position. Jimmy McCown want to follow this up. And that's not ideal. The eagle eyed of you in this camera angle will notice the name on the jack there. <laughs> that's my jack. Well, the commentary presence on the show call this morning. Those of you that have been following Jamie throughout the week will have noticed that that wasn't his usual jack and that's because in the pairs event you only use the one jack and uh, normally when we compete they use my jack and this event was no different. <laughs> so I have a appearance on the show court at long last. There we go. He wants he wanted to get there. I've been trying all week. <laughs> <laughs> well there we go. Our presence has been felt on show court. 
Let's hope it does Great Britain proud. What can Australia do to respond? Oh, yes. Oh, what a shot. That is a fantastic goal. Spencer Cotty, superb play. You can see the smile on his face. And that was a very soft ball they've put on there. That's very hard to move. How do Great Britain respond now? Just a quick update from the game that means so much in this game the loser of this potentially playing Greece and it is Greece who are leading 1-0 it's Patrick to open up here good shot that's good what he wanted good reply from Patrick Wilson creating a gap now yeah you see how much the red clung to the jack shows you how soft it is but they can see in now so it's okay from a Great Britain perspective. So the extension gets put in, set to the right pace by ramp assistant Linda, or to me and Jamie, mum. <laughs> Notice she uh, doesn't have a seat as well in the box. Oh, yeah, wow. one of the few uh, ramp assistants that goes without the chair now. And that's just to try and create more space. <coughs> it's not ideal at all. And they'll be disappointed with that. Wasn't the line. No, they had quite a big target to find of three balls. And obviously the softer the ball is the more difficult it is to find the line because they don't stay as consistently around. That's the trade-off with softer balls. And obviously Spencer was able to find the line, but Jamie not able to. So this is not starting too well for Great Britain here in this end. Find themselves 1-0 down as well. About to use their fourth ball of the second end yep and that's a hard ball so Patrick I think it's going to try and move things around my guess will be the jack I can't quite see the, what they can see Oh, he went for the knock-on. Well, he's great shot. Got it, and it's close to the jack, and still an an opening there. Yeah. So from the angle we had, it didn't look like that ball was actually in play for Patrick, but that just shows the the difference sometimes in perspectives. So he was able to knock that one to the jack, and that was a good shot. But obviously, the red still hangs around with that tactic. So, two balls touching the jack, it looks like. So, just a few words of advice from Jamie. Yeah, four balls played to Australia's one, so they're in a bit of a sticky situation here. And that's the only thing about trying to promote the ball to the jack when you've got that soft red already there. Sometimes it's very hard to get closer well, Great Britain find themselves 1-0 down and needing to respond in this second end See what Jamie McCowan can do this one. Pushing the Just blue securing, again. Securing that blue. Yeah, they've got it now. 
But for how long, I wonder. Australia you got so many balls left. It is looking more increasingly advantage Australia. Yeah. And with two players like Daniel Michel and Spencer Cote, they are such clinical players. Yeah. Daniel, the world number six. And he uh, had a remarkable year last year. Actually, in the space of three or four weeks, became Kansas City and Bangkok World Open champion. Fair bit of air miles there. So often the case for Australia because the competitions in Botch are so far away from them every time. They're used to travelling around a lot and coping with jet lag and such like. Oh, and that's a rare miss from Daniel. It is, especially in the form he's in. He got the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't quite see the reaction or whether he was surprised by that or not, but sometimes, and I mentioned that yesterday, it may be the case that they were trying to get that one away so that they could move the soft one easier because that one wouldn't hold it. I've got to say, my initial instinct was that that wasn't required, but that's not to say that from their angle it looked a lot different. So I'm not entirely sure whether that was a mess, but it certainly felt that way. You see Spencer there looking straight down the ramp. It's a, an angle and a view that these BC3 players often take up. What can he do here? Spencer won the bronze medal in Dubai at the, World, at the Regional Open 2017. Oh. And that's a great shot. Slotted it through the gap. Fantastic play from Spencer Cote. He saw the gap and executed it. That's fantastic. Look at that reaction. He knows how important that one is. That was really nice. And there really is nowhere to go for Great Britain. He can't hide his delight, can he? It's great to see. Yeah, Australia in the driver's seat now. No doubt. Patrick with the final ball. What can he conjure up here? Well, they need something special to Great Britain. If they are to stay in touch with Australia. And that's a defensive shot. I think there, to just try and limit them. Although there is room for Australia to potentially nudge one round. Yeah, I mean, that shot leaves the the other red with the ability to be pushed up. But the problem is, the one ball left, if they tried to cover the other one, then the shot was available to smash into the jacket red, get the jack moving back, and open up an even bigger space. So they were kind of between a rock and a hard place there. Can't cover everything. Got to make choices when you're in that situation. And ultimately it'll come down to the execution of Australia, whether it was right or wrong. But definitely a possible option from Patrick there, no doubt. And they probably would have considered the other one. Communication key in these team and comp pairs competition. Yeah, that's right. You only get so long, got to be concise, clear, and ultimately make the right call. Spencer Cotty. 
So, shoot next. Yeah, that looks like a good shot. Yeah. Two to red. Really well played from Spencer Cotty. Just nudged that softer ball close to the jack. And yeah. It's actually a little unfortunate. The red is rolled back and I think it might be in their line now. So another replay of this. See they are just rolling back. If that had flicked out to the side it would have been a lot better for Australia. But Dan has the two balls so I don't think it will hamper him too much in actual fact. See Dan there with that remarkable robotic arm on his chair, and that is really a wonder to see it. Uh, holds coffee cups for him, even helps him scratch his head. Really is a wonderful device as he tries to bring the red into play that was short. Looks like there was too much power on that one from Daniel, and it just ricocheted away. Yeah, he's, I think he's actually done fairly well there because he's got it in play now. But I think he'll probably try and just go between the two scoring reds hard, try and push everything in. Maybe it'll climb up on top, who knows. But the Great Britain boys will have expected two. And if they get it to three, that could be painful. It was like an important shot for Australia. Yeah, definitely. Take a 4-0 lead into the third end. Oh, look at that. Um, mm. Michelle. Oh, that really is a great shot. I was wondering had he got the pace right. I think he has. And that was very delicately done. Well played. Referee, referee Jennifer Larson will dissect the balls but I'm pretty sure that is three points to Australia. I thought he uh, would have had to have hit that harder but he knew that the delicate shot was the one. Obviously looks closer now those balls. Actually I hadn't considered the one on the right here. Looking again don't think it will be three. Nope. I'd forgotten about the <laughs> one on the right almost. So focused on the the, the other blue. Middle. So he had it will be two points to Australia but still a fantastic lead going into the third end and you see how so many things to consider when you're measuring even someone like me with 10 years experience can forget about the other ball <laughs> so there's, I don't envy the referees on the show court in these situations she and did I'm very well actually there Jennifer Larson yeah I'd much rather be up here or on the court playing, they're not going to do that job. And this is a big team talk for Glenn Tromans here. He's got to get them fired up, keep them positive. They're still well in the game, even though Australia have the 3 0 lead. Yeah. But this is a very important end now. There's no second chances for Great Britain in this game. Yeah, it was a poor end by their standards. And they need to come out fighting here. Especially as they had the placement of the jack as well. So it's back to Australia. A word of optimism for the Great Britain fans here. We lost the two first two ends against Australia in Montreal. Came back to win. So that will be in their heads at this point. I'm sure Glenn will have used that as motivation in the team talk. But also I'm sure Australia are thinking that. They'll be thinking they want to take control of this third end, not let Great Britain back in. So many little factors affecting every move on show court. Clear your mind and just focus on the task at hand. especially with the crucial game between Russia and Greece happening 
just to the right of them on court three. Daniels Jack. Short again. Four metres for Australia. It's right in line with Spencer Cotty as well. Big ball this. Can he follow it up? Update from the game between Russia and Greece, and it is Greece who have doubled their lead. Of course, that Greece side contains the man who pulled off the greatest comeback, Polychronidis. Oh, oh, fantastic. Really lovely play from Daniel Michel. Fantastic. Follow-up delivery. Australia putting the hammer down here. They're not letting up. Great Britain's going to have to fight, battle to get into this. It wasn't going to be easy. I tell you what, if Australia had walked onto the court and placed that ball, that's where they would have put it. right in the way of both players from Great Britain and it's a tough call in deciding who's going to play the, the power shot they've elected for Jamie to go and Great Britain usually set up with it with two really hard balls on the outside one in the middle so Jamie will be using the sole hard ball he has here He's got a bit of the jack. Yeah, he has deflected the jack away and it's slightly opened it up for Patrick Wilson now as well. Yeah, it's good separation. Can Patrick see in? That's the question. Or will they have to move it again? It looks like it will be Patrick to go, so you do feel that this ball is really important. Yeah, and if, I think it was Patrick's shot regardless, whether he elects to move it or go for the jack, so we won't quite know until the pace and ball is chosen. That will be the clue. And it's right at the top, so that suggests they're moving that red. And it's assistant William positioning the pointer and ball. And it looks like a hard one. Coming from an angle. So difficult to do. Yeah. Oh, fantastic work from Patrick Wilson. That's the shot. Just what they needed, Great Britain. The pace and the accuracy spot on. Yeah, I can't overemphasize the importance of this next shot. This is absolutely crucial. Can Patrick Wilson follow that one up? My guess is he'll go for the, the softest ball and try and nail that angle, put the pressure on. There's Jamie, instead of to go for it. I'm reasonably well informed that throughout the week so far he's been very good at this shot. Mm. Not quite. And no, it's not ideal. Had the line, but it's too far away to really use up balls. Such a shame after the fantastic work from Patrick Wilson. That face says it all. Oh. 
the noise level picking up in here now around it's the room. Certainly is. A fantastic atmosphere here at the exhibition centre in Liverpool. A good crowd in today. As we head towards the later stages of the team and pairs competition. Australia only played the one, so I think they'll decide the best action is to clear that blue out of the way. Yep, that's the one. They've done, and it's opened things up again. Now Australia have the chance to take control of the jack and punish Great Britain for not fully taking control. Well, it's a similar scenario as we've just seen for Australia now. And you can just see the tension, I think, in Ashley, Dan's assistant, who can't really do much but look down. This is a crucial shot for Australia and for Great Britain, in fact, as well. What can Spencer do? Yeah, Spencer got three left, so he's taking this one. It's a 50-50 shot, this, for both of them. Oh, oh. not quite for That was very Spencer. close, just a bit too hard, and it's bounced to the side, and that lets GB in, so that's a good sign. No one is taking control of this end. Yeah. And it is tantalising stuff on show court. You can see they're still just a bit awkward. The red, they just can't quite see all the jack. Which means they've got a decision to make. And I think Patrick's certainly lined up first, so looks like he might play. Great Britain side were seventh in Pavoa last time out. Got the bronze in Montreal and started off the year with the first ever uh, gold in the pairs for this lineup back in Madrid. Coming back from five down after two ends. Wouldn't they like something similar here? That'd be perfect for Great Britain. Going to move the red out. Good shot. Yeah, very nicely done from Patrick Wilson now opening it up yet again. Yep. And if the last layup to the jack was important, we are now at the critical point. It's got to go. This has got to be perfect. A real chance for Great Britain. Australia with three balls remaining. Yeah, and they'll be thinking to themselves, even one means it's our jack, two behind, still on. But they've got to win this end, you feel. Sure you don't give up many points to anyone. And he'll have in his head what happened to the last one. He has to decide whether to adjust from there or trust in his previous thoughts. So it might just be that particular ball. Well, it's stuck to the jack. It's but not bad, but it's not think, perfect. Yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. It's not, not great, but not quite right, really. Still an opportunity for Australia to get in there. And with that red ball behind as well. Yeah, and if I was Australia right now, I would be thinking about going for the jack. Moving into space with Great Britain having only one left, but it looks like Spencer's gonna play. He will not be able to do that. We'll see 
what they like to do. He's played a really good game up to this point, Spencer. Yeah, been very impressive so far. Yep, he's played at a level above his rank of 21, got to say. Power shot here. And he did go for the the jack. Oh, it's opened things up a bit. He couldn't really initially see from that first angle. Measure could be important here. Obviously it gives Britain the chance to get in there. But no. Nope. Red to play. Well, well one opportunity here. That one will have hurt Great Britain. They'll have been hoping they were going to get a shot there. How would you play this one, Scott? If you could go to the left of the jack, you could potentially block off that blue ball, but to the right, you could still potentially let Great Britain in. Yeah, I think... Well, it's hard to tell from the angle, but it looks like straight forward into the jack for Dan here and you want to just secure the point first and then see what happens if you get too far ahead at this point but that looks like power is the order of the day full power in fact and I think they might be going for the jack Again here. Driving it oh, back. Oh, look at that. Pushing it back. And to hold two. And that's the shot I was talking about. I'm going to say I thought Dan had the ability to do it before the last shot. But maybe he didn't, and that's why they played the first one. And you might think it's open, but obviously it puts the pressure on the, the last ball of Patrick. And it does have a line in. Can he get between red and blue? It's very difficult for Patrick Wilson. This really would have to be a, a magical shot. The blues are obviously too far away to be used to promote. I don't think they're in his line either. So he has to draw to the jack here now. Tension on show court. Pressure on the captain to respond. And Great Britain pull it off, and in particular, Patrick Wilson. An extension's gone on. That's the current scene on show court. It's intense until the very end. I think this is the, the softball left, which is the one you want for the shot. Yep, that is right. So it's the best chance he has to make this one. Crucial. Oh, oh, too hard. Too hard. He found the line really well, did Patrick Wilson, but too much pace on it. It was so close. So close for Patrick Wilson. See it coming in here. Oh, I was just left as well a bit. And the problem with that is, if he got past the red, all he had to do was be closer and it made it difficult but you see now Spencer can hit that red full power drive it towards the jack whereas if the blue had stopped in behind there it would have been more difficult and he's got it oh look at that pinpoint accuracy from Spencer no messing about clinical from Australia and that's another point added to the tally and they take a four point advantage going into the final end. And like many of the Great Britain fans in the audience, I'm hoping in my heart of hearts we can turn this round. But speaking as a neutral commentator, I can't help but feel that was the kill shot. It certainly looks that way. A lot of work to do now for Great Britain, but Australia in control. Great Britain had three chances 
probably at least two to get control of the jack and couldn't take it and Australia punished them and now at four down Great Britain have an interesting call to make whether they stick to the plan or change it up how much will the BC3 final impact that decision well if they'll need to take inspiration off that man Polychronidis surely not Scott surely not it would be quite something if they could but we'll find out very soon and just quickly the other game involving Great Britain on court number six team BC1 BC2 Great Britain currently find themselves 4-1 down to Colombia mm. so not the result that was needed both Great Britain teams right up against it how quickly it can turn the only difference of course of this Great Britain side in the pairs BC3 they do know they are through but could be facing the almighty task of Greece in the quarterfinals but still one end to go and still a glimmer of hope and this will be my final appearance on the show court in terms of the jack ball can it do you proud Scott what can Patrick Wilson do with it hopefully we'll see it again and Great Britain can turn it around and that's a longer uh, distance the jack has to go because obviously it's a soft jack and that has went longer than the previous one looks about six meters to me I agree six meters just a tad further than the yep. change of second end tactic. A bit longer. And as we know, the harder, sorry, the longer you play the jack, the harder it is to be accurate, particularly with the ramp. This ball now from Patrick Wilson is so important. Just to get right and start this fourth end right, build up some momentum. Yep, and as we know, both teams are ready through. So, and that's just... It's gone wide. Combination of line and pace. Not always needed for Great Britain and Australia will be licking their lips now. And yeah, as I say, both teams are already through. So, yeah, you want to try and win the game. But now for Great Britain, you've got to really be thinking as well. Get confidence back. Get the chins up. We live to fight another day or another afternoon <laughs> in this occasion but like you quite rightly say Scott they are through so they can't get too disheartened for long if they end up losing this match yep and pick themselves back up and go again a great side and all the capability in the world yeah and whether it's Greece or whether it's Russia they've defeated both of those sides before so they won't be phased by it You're hearing a fantastic atmosphere around the exhibition centre. So many great games going on. And Greece are actually making a substitution below us, which is normally a sign of things going well. You're quite right, Scott. It is 4 0 to Greece against Russia. <coughs> what can Dan do here with his opening shot? Mm. and that's slightly better but not much it slightly drifted towards the jack and the end of the line but at least it's in play and set in the sense that it's short of the jack so you can use it Australia to go next and you're always thinking when you're four up or a similar score just get them playing get them using balls if there's balls out of court or balls 
a great distance from the head. They can't hurt you. You're thinking less about constructing the end. Just open it up. Make it as difficult as possible to get those points. Oh, he's taken out the blue ball of yep. Great Britain. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. If that had been a regular end, he probably wouldn't have played that shot. But that's one ball away that can be done, that can do damage. It's a softball as well. They're more likely to be used to score. And obviously, Great Britain play with three hard balls. So that makes it very tough. You now have to get two hard balls into that current area unless the jack's moved. And that's something that Great Britain might look to do at any point at this end. But they've got decisions to make. Communication between Jamie and Patrick, absolutely key here. And Australia will not care about winning this end. That is just not important at this stage. So a lot of the time teams will sacrifice the end, play a certain way to make sure Great Britain or their opponent in any game can't come back at you as long as they win. Well, especially with points difference and head-to-head -head record not being a factor nope. involved in this. Straightforward shootout. And I think Patrick's going to try and get that jack back to the blue to give themselves a better chance of the four or five required. And I think that's right. Well, that's uh, that's uh, that's the ball going out. Not helped. Not what was required. He managed to force the jack back but that's a ball lost now yeah they've done the initial job got it back to the one that's behind but it now means they have a ball less to do the damage but that jack is now considerably further back and that changes the pace required on these shots Oh, no real pressure on Australia. Spencer can have a chance to judge the speed on this one. Open Jack here just make Great Britain play. Four balls each for Australia and Great Britain in this final end. The soft ball. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Coming from the wider angle and he has pulled off a fantastic shot. What a ball from Spencer Cody. That's terrific. He's been phenomenal. He really has. He's been the standout player on the show court in this game. Look at that shot. That is precision. The jack was in a position they hadn't practiced to on this court. So he had to work it out from his previous knowledge. And he got it absolutely spot on. And sometimes you just have to hold your hands up and go, there's nothing I could have done. That was a fantastic shot. Yep. They had to move the jack. They had to risk that to give them a chance. They wouldn't have done that in normal circumstances if the game was level. 
but it was the right call. But uh, Australia answered the call. And oh, that's a good shot, actually. That's a really good reply, actually, from holding two now. Jim McCow, and then it swings again. I can't believe the separation he got there. That's terrific. Normally, with a ball like that on the jack, you don't get that amount of separation. But he caught the jack. Spencer had just left him enough of it. And that's what made the crucial difference. Didn't think he could get that. And now, there is a chance. And Australia just get a little tinge of tension. Well, now the pressure, like you said, Scott, is back on Spencer after a fantastic shot in the previous one. He needs to pull off something again. I think he will try and just promote the red again. Oh, oh I mean, that is superb. And Spencer Cotty. Well played. And that wraps it up, I think. Whatever I can do, Spencer can do better. Whatever. That was fantastic from Spencer Cotty. See, the jack's still available slightly to Jamie, but the, he can't play that ball now because the, the hard ball's away. He won't have the power to move that. And Patrick's going to have to try and dig them out now. But it does look remote. But even if they can't win the end, they'll reach a point where if it's not possible, they'll then think, sorry, at least if they can't win the game, they'll reach a point where they then think, well, let's just try and win an end to get some confidence back. I don't know if they're at that point yet, but I would suggest probably not. It just depends what he's got here, I can't tell. No, straight oh. through the gap. He could see the jack, he could see the red, the anxious faces of the support for Great Britain. And he just missed that completely. It's hard to tell what one he went for, but that's pretty much put it beyond doubt. With two balls out of court now. Well, Great Britain will be looking you said, Scott, just to win an end and get some points on the board. Yeah, I think that's probably the point we're at now. They can't get disheartened with a quarter-final coming up next, and that's oh. another one that goes straight through the gap. And when you try and play a softball at pace like that, you can so often lose the line, and they'll just want this to end as quickly as possible now, I think. The game is gone. It's looking more and more likely that the end is gone. And thoughts will begin to move to the next game. Another one coming very quickly and straight through the gap again. So, Yeah, he's just trying to hit that jack to get something. It's such a hard shot from his angle now. You can barely see any of it. And, yeah, they're not going to care whether it's three or not but Australia doing the sportsman thing throwing away see they're all great friends they'll not want to rub it in win the game they move on another great contest well another win for Australia in this group it's three out of three and a superb performance from Australia too much for Great Britain Standout player, Spencer Cotty, really played well, didn't he, Scott? Yeah, he played a few pressure balls that he absolutely nailed. On the show court, had to get them. You can tell, the look at his face, how delighted he is with his performance. And so he should be. A 
Great Britain can't get too disheartened. They are through to the quarterfinals, whatever happened in this game. It looks like Greece lie in wait for them next. But just having a look at the scorecard, it was consistent scoring from Australia. Never gave Great Britain a sniff, really, during the game. Yeah, that's right. The first end was the close one. Uh, and they only took the one, they were quite happy with that. But then the second end, they had balls left on the Great Britain jack to do the damage. Third end could have went either way, they both had chances. But crucially, the last ball was made by Australia and not made by Great Britain. And then the last end, well, they had to do certain things to try and get back into it. But Australia, I thought, did all the right moves, controlled that end, were the winners. Well, well done to Australia. A 5-0 win in the pairs BC3 final pool match of Pool C. Well, we'll be back for you at 1.30 with our first quarter final from the pairs BC4 on show court. But next up, we have got an interview with David Hadfield. Stephen Jameson spoke to him. He's the president of BISFED. And he'll be talking about what a fantastic week we've had here at the Boccia World Championships here in Liverpool. But we'll be back at 1.30 for our first quarter final on show court. So joined here with David Hadfield, the Bisfed president. David, we've seen a fantastic competition so far. How much have you enjoyed it? Well, I've enjoyed it enormously so far. Um, I'd go as far as to say it's exceeded all our wildest expectations, really. And that's really saying something because we came into this competition with the knowledge that a lot of new things were being tried with high expectations. And it seems to have surpassed them, not just for yourself, but for everyone around the place. It's a really positive mindset. Well, we're trying to set the standard just as high as we can. Um, the next big competition will be the Paralympic Games, uh, and we want this to be a benchmark for what we do at the Paral Paralympic Games. Um, I would say this is better than it was in Rio in terms of sports presentation. And one of the main contributing factors about this, I know, is the, is the court layout, which has never been tried in the sport before. From speaking to athletes, from spectators, they seem to enjoy it. From your perspective, it must be great because you can watch so much at once. Well, it's tremendously innovative because the spectators can get really close to the field of play. Uh, then we have the show court in the middle. Uh, all the finals games will be concentrated there. Usually the finals are played with two or three games on at the same time. And uh, now people will be absolutely able to focus on the medal event. And this has been a huge undertaking from yourselves as a, as a federation. Only been going five years, I understand, as well. So to come such a long way in such a short time must require quite a lot of hard work. Well, it requires ambition, actually. Um, yes, there's a lot of hard work. Um, and most of it is voluntary. So we just hope and expect that people will come along with us. But um, we've doubled our membership. We now have 72 uh, countries who um, play boccia. Um, 33 of them, I think, are here today. Uh, that's all happened in five years. And it is one of the fastest growing para sports in the world. What do you put that down to? It's the fastest growing Paralympic sport. Um, we set out with an ambition to give as many competitive opportunities to athletes as we could. Uh, and so we have multiplied the, um, the world ranking events that we sanction by a factor of 10 in five years. So uh, before London, there were four uh, events in each cycle. We're going to do 44 or 45 between Rio and Tokyo, of which this is the pinnacle. And this is all about the cycle, of course, for the athletes, for the coaches, also for the Federation as well. What are you expecting to continue to grow or grow even further between now and Tokyo 2020? 
Well, I think the we've probably reached about the limit of what we're able to do at this point in time because growth brings its own challenges with it. We have had to um, develop a lot more uh, referees uh, and classifiers in order to be able to cope with what is now a very professional game as far as the athletes are concerned. Well, we can't wait to watch the conclusion of this championships and to just see how far this sport can go and we thank you for your time. That's a great pleasure. Nice to talk to you.
My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, up through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackpot, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball's thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point 
each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends. 
while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Botcher balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get a, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country.
Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player pair or team get six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side, whose ball is not nearest to the jack, throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. 
Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 meters by 6 meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls. 
and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Archer was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Botcher, the stats. Botcher comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication so there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the of the playing staff here rather than support staff play with um, leather balls so, um, they're quite soft yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackpot, then my first red ball. And Blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than Boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. 
team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as bull or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their oppositions or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 
104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get a, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. 
The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams 
and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, 
If two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or a system device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. We play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball. And each team has six red balls and six blue balls. And the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackpot, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball's thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. 
team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as bull or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. A 
104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. 
the sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watch your balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. 
weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls. 
before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball. And each team has six red balls and six blue balls. And the object is to get as close as possible to the, to the jack ball. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Watcher was introduced to the Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Exhibition Centre in Liverpool. We're on the edge of the River Mersey. Liverpool, this year's hosts of the Bisfed 2018 World Boccia Championships. We've already had a fantastic day here in Liverpool, and what a great week it's been. Also, 
the conclusion of the individual championships on Wednesday. But we are now getting into the latter stages of the pairs and teams competition as we look ahead to the knockout stages here this afternoon. You can feel the excitement and tension rising every minute. And on show court, it's our first BC4 quarterfinal between Canada and Germany. There's some outstanding players for both sides who did fantastically well in the individual competition. And I'm delighted to say that I am joined by my side once again by Peter Maguire. This one is set up to be a really intriguing match with players such as Boris Nikolai and Alice Levine coming up against each other. Yeah, we're really looking forward to this one. Uh, Germany won two of the pool games, some of them were Portugal on route here, and Canada won all the pool games comfortably. But uh, Canada got a tight unit of players, a lot of depth and experience, so I wonder what we can do against Boris, who's really risen up through the ranks here this tournament. Now. I'm looking forward to this. It's certainly been a fantastic couple of days in the team and pairs competition. We've already had two cracking matches on show court, including China versus Croatia in the pairs BC4. It was China who came out with the 9-2 victory. And then Australia against Great Britain in the pairs BC3. And as Australia beat Great Britain 5-0. All our focus now is on the quarterfinal stage and Canada versus Germany. Boris Nikolai and Alice Levine, big players for, Germ for uh, each side. These are the games in the quarterfinals in the BC4 pairs. Some really fantastic games. Great Britain up against the number one side, Slovakia. Hong Kong against Croatia. And China against Thailand. You can see the shift here is going back to the European. We've got four European countries through here. Uh, three from Asia and one from the Americas. Uh, before in the, this tournament, it's a lot more of the Asian countries that kind of push through to these final stages of these events. So it's really good that uh, Europe's getting back on top, especially Great Britain. In Canada, it looks like it's nominated to go with a captain on the bench. Starting off here, Marco Despaltro. Referee is Murray Parent. So the two sides line up like this. This is for Germany. Bastian Keller, who's going to be throwing the jack. Next to him, Julian Kayobanu. Alison Levine on the far left and Boris Nikolai in the centre. Always important as possible. See ya. He's got it touching. Good first throw from Keller. See, Allison will take this one off first. He's got the best angle here. Yeah, a lot of room. And a lot of power. <laughs> a lot of, certainly a lot of power in Alice Levine. She had a really good individual competition. Oh, that's a mistake there. Well, we weren't expecting that from Alison Levine. Normally being on target throughout the championships. That's the first mistake I've seen from Levine this week. Yeah. It's getting to those stages where every ball is really important. She should handle those nails. There we go. That's a bit better from Alison Levine opening it up. 
Yeah. But the ball advantage now switches to Germany, which has more balls. Important one to follow up. Lane was good, just I think a little short. Yeah, nearly there from Kaio Banu. Yep. Looks like he's going to opt to throw again. Is he going for the push? Yeah, but he's opened up there for Keller now. Keller can see it. He's managed to budge the blue ball around, but it's an uh, opportunity now for Keller to have a good look at that. Jack? Can actually go for the point here or actually shift Candice balls and bring Boris into play. Boris still has three balls. And what use those? No, oh, slots it in there. Very nicely done from Bastian Keller. Two balls left here for Kana. I know he's Canadian as well, and I think they've lost a tie. Uh, no, the time cost because they usually nominate to go red. Oh, just oh, not enough power on it from Alison Levine. I think she's tried to tickle it. Let's give a little kiss and knock it in. And also set her ball there. So it doesn't get knocked away. I know it's very early stages, but we haven't seen that from Levine, where she's not been able to judge her pace. Yeah. <laughs> Just protecting that ball. Now Boris has three left. Kayla has two. Trying to defend well, Canada there, trying to reduce the deficit as much as it can, but it will be Germany who will take a lead unless... Perfect shot would be a lob. Oh, just he, he, he must have been listening to you beat it because mm. he went for it. Still get two balls, can do it. Now he knows the range, wasn't far away. Again. It's too far. It's you not can see he's getting frustrated. Yeah. There wasn't enough spin there to bring it back down quick enough. I think. Will he go for it again? Shot to nothing, he should. Well, he's landed it short this time, and he might have nudged it even closer for the blue ball. After all that, oh, very lucky. Yeah. From Boris Nikolai, he's been fantastic all week for 
Germany. And off this loose red at the bottom of the screen. Come back towards the jack. going for the point thinking about it one in the bag already for Germany and they had another let's watch Paolo doesn't want to come in too hard again no, no he hasn't got it it's just going to be one for Germany and a real chance that was for Going into the second e second end with two. Or more, yeah. They had plenty of opportunities. Just those lob shots. You get the feeling that Canada will be mighty relieved with that. I think they'll take the one point deficit. Information there. And one red. Contingent there, sound lively. Turn them on. Yeah, you can just from our position see them right at the front, getting behind. Alison Levine and Julian Cayabano. We'll also keep you updated with all the other games around the courts, including the two games involving. Great Britain size in the pairs BC4 and the team competitions. Interesting to see where Canada goes. That's Jack Ball now. And to Canada to place the Jack. punish Germany for not taking more points. Four metres. That's good. I think Boris can see it from back of the box. Or yeah, he's obstructed one of the German pair. And Nikolai, like you said, Peter, I think he's Got a slight angle on that one. Yeah. And here's Nikolai. He's got his eyes set on it. So it's an inch perfect though. You can't clip this front ball. I'll come to the side of the jack. Leave it more exposed and easy for Alison. Get in. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Look at that from Boris Nikolai. He's been pinpoint all week, and that's another one. Really nice play from Boris Nikolai. Williams got the best chance of getting this. Just another look at that one from Kayabanu, and it just brushes past his initial ball. Perfect opportunity here. Just see that line in between the red and the blue. And off. So it's a measure. A lot more power have been secured now. Oh, 
update from the game on court three in the pairs BC4 is Great Britain who are fallen behind 1-0 to Slovakia after the first end. Just give her a little push here. Yeah, she set it up, did Levine. This one is really important now. Oh, she's done that. Secured the blue. Will Boris here again go for a lob shot? Or can Keller? No, he's not left handed. Actually, see this jack ball. Well, shot this one. Yeah, he's not been able to get his range right so far as Nikolai. Again, that's useful. Kayla can use that now to come in off. Just Kayla can just give it a faint nudge to yeah. that jack. You don't want to come in here with too much power. Target this time. Yeah, he's closing that uh, channel as well, pushing that blue on. I think we'll have another go. Yeah, still got time as Keller. And here he goes again, Bastian Keller. Very smooth, this action. It's very nice to watch. Oh, oh look at that. Got it. Straight through the gap and onto the jack. Worth another look. Just creeps in there. Beautiful from Bastian Keller. And like you said, Peter, he's got such a nice action to watch. It's very smooth, free flowing. That's when we need in this sport, especially in the BC4 category. Precision. Thinking really hard here, Canada. They're nominating for Allison here. Lob shot onto the blue, push up onto the jack. Oh, she, she got that slight gap there between the two reds she could aim for. Small. It certainly is. What did she do, Alison Levine? Well, she went for it. it. She's done very well. That was a power that took that through there. Ricocheting off. Another red as well. We saw the power early in the day in the BC4s of Yusan Sen Zheng and the power of Alison Levine there to break through that initial barrier. Mm. Superb. She also uses the hand bike quite a lot in the gym. Get those shoulder muscles up. Really strong. She certainly is, Alison Levine. And Weapon for Canada and an asset has been used through the pool stages. We've got the flags there for everyone here. It's 33 countries in total. It's fantastic to see the, the whole world has descended on Liverpool for a fantastic week of Boccia. One of the biggest fixtures in the Boccia calendar. What can you do here now? He certainly provided us, a, provided us with some magic as Boris Nikolai and 
Can he pull it off again? Well, you've only got one. Two, in fact, your points. Yeah, he can afford to do this. And no, oh, not a power. At the lane, just too soft. Come back. He was very close, Boris Nikolai, to pulling it off. And you can through that channel and hit the closest red. You can push your jack back towards the loose red behind. It's risky. But doable. It's a bit of for me. It's Keller to throw next for Germany. Their last ball of the second end. Can they stop Canada from gaining a point? Oh, he was very close to doing that as well. Yeah, a lot of spinning that ball he made connection with. Actually took it away from the jack in the end. Just want to have another look. Look at this again. Oh, he even touched the jack. Yeah, just couldn't hold on to it. Not enough PVA glue. <laughs> no glue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really in some trouble finding a path in here now. If it was uh, Allison's ball, just straight on that jack. A lot more difficult with those reds blocking his path here. Yeah. He's right back in his box, goes for it, and doesn't get it. Oh, to rescue that. Nearly worked against him there. Count themselves a bit fortunate. So it looks like it will be another point added to the scoreboard. On blue to Canada. One all. It's going to be a close game here, I think. It certainly is. Only oh. one point apiece in each end. It's setting up to be a tantalising game. Do not move away from your seats. This is going to be a game that will see us all the way through to the fourth end. But let's have a look at the games happening in the quarterfinals of the team's competition. No representative from Great Britain there. <laughs> Japan, South Korea, hey, Netherlands, hey, Brazil, hey. Argentina, China, and Thailand, Portugal. Some fascinating games. Again, the Asian side taking 50% of the slots here. Two from Europe and two from the Americas. China, South Korea, and <laughs> Thailand. Very strong in the team classification. <laughs> Smile from Boris Nikolai from the response from the supporter, supporters of Canada. Boris Nikolai to place the jack for Germany. Three and a half metres for Boris Nikolai, but of course, in these pairs games that's a lot shorter for Keller it is I think he's adapting to uh, bringing his partner in as well the angle it's good but I think Alison can see it she's pretty wide out there it's always the problem in the pairs game you can always cut off one but <laughs> the other person has, has a clear sight of the, uh, the jack mm -hmm. so, changes Forever changes here.
You can never block off an angle in the pairs game in Boccia. Oh, and she went for it. That's good. And did very, very well. What a response from Alison Levine. I think Boris here should actually take that blue out. Hopefully not too far. So we've got the second shot again, put one back in. Bastian Keller to throw next for Germany. Nice and smooth throw again. He got that one good. Nice knock up there. Keller. Let's have another little replay. Yeah, nicely done from Bastian Keller. Also took off that that blue ball there, it was nice. Oh, wrong ball there by Alison. She knocked the blue away. I think Williams tried to come in trying to come in this now. Yeah the crowds really up now. Yeah, the atmosphere is electric here in the exhibition centre in Liverpool. Let's see what Alison Levine did with her previous throw. And for again and knocks it out of the way. That was good. Look at the power from Alison Levine. Just a battering ram away from the jack. That ball wasn't behind it. That red was surely out. Right out of the corner. Okay, let's get this back on. Put Canada back under pressure. What a response from Bastian Keller. Doesn't look too pleased with it now. With the bounce back. What does it mean that. Great angle. You know, it's guarding that jack from both the opponents. Look how tight it is. The ref just pointing. Blue to go. And there to throw next. Score update from the Great Britain against Slovakia game on court three in the pairs BC4. It is currently one all. So Great Britain have managed to get themselves back into the game. All our attention is on the show court. And what is an enthralling game between Germany and Canada? A tight game. But a very tactical and intriguing game nonetheless. Now into the knockout stages. It's a win, or, win or out for these teams now. Looking back. Yeah, need to minimise your mistakes now. If you can't afford to have a few loose balls. And, uh, I think he's trying to try to cut that jack back. Playing the blues. Has he done it? Yeah, blues closer. By a hair, and it will be Germany to throw next. Thanks, my boy. It actually pushes this ball on. A little hit and sit. Just protect it with your ball, also that you throw. Just a quick reminder, of course, there is five minutes per pair. 
in the BC4 category. Time hasn't really been an issue for either of these sides. Marnie oh just way. nudges it on. But yeah. That's all right. That's good. So another look. Oh, some oh. bounce off that jack. It really did. It took a big reaction off the jack and it stole two minutes ago. Will be. So they can just nudge this on now. Must be a new jack they're using. So I'm familiar with it. It is their own jack they're using. So you should know what will happen when they interact with it. Oh, nudging the ball out of the way. That's fantastic play from Boris Nikolai. So clever. So precise and got the pace right. And nudges his ball in there. Two points to Red, looks like. That back blue can come into play if Canada a little bit back. I think it's just Ulian that has both balls left. Doesn't want to go in two points behind England. It doesn't want to go in too risky either with these balls. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Wedges himself in there. Oh, fantastic play from Uli and Kayabanu. Uh, one ball shoot out for this point now. He's got to get it. This could be a huge throw for Germany now. Look at that. So precise from Kayabano. Brilliant play. One ball eats to see who went in the final end. One point up. All I have to do is just knock that red up. One ball each for Germany and Canada. You got it. He's done it. Oh, and he's actually managed to nudge the ball away from the jack as well from Canada. If William comes into that gap, pushes his blue on, it will take the jack off the front red once it makes a connection with it. Can't go in here really hard, but just enough to like, tickle it off. Well, how important could this shot be for Canada? Will it be either? The Germans or Canada will take a one point advantage going into the final end of this very tense and tight quarter final on show court. Oh, oh. think too hard. Too hard. There's no big celebration, and that's the reason why it's going to be Germany who will take the one-point advantage going into the final end, and what an advantage that could be in what has been an extremely tight affair. Unless this game opens up. The only benefit here for Canada now is we have control of the jack. You can actually start really work through this white ball long short to the tram lines hopefully they've found out a weakness and looking ahead to the bc3 knockout stage and what a game in store in the quarter finals which is ongoing at the moment between greece and great britain the updates from that one south korea against france spain against hong kong and australia against Thailand. 
<laughs> Some exciting ties in the BC3 category. All our attention and all our eyes are locked on Showcorp. It's the BC4 quarter final. And we're into the final end between Canada and Germany. Down the Four meters for Alison Levine. Crucial this. Oh, Boris can see this in the back of the court. Even Keller might have a slight look at it. Not the start that Alison Levine wanted, and she bows her head down. And shaking her head too. Can Boris Nikolai take advantage? Not hard enough. No, he didn't take the ricochet. He wanted off the blue, and no. can't tackle this. You need to be really confident and secure. In what you're doing here. Still Germany to throw. I want to nominate the same person to throw again. I was out here. He definitely says he sees something different with me. Superb from Bastian Geller, and you see the fist bump. He's happy with that one. It's more like a face of relief afterwards. That was great. That's a really nice shot, isn't it, actually, from uh -huh. Bastian Keller? And that's superb play. And what can Alison Levine do? Back to the wall here. He come out fighting. Great. Fantastic response from Alison Levine. All that great work from Bastian Keller has just been obliterated in one throw from Alison Levine. Again, you only need one point. You know, it's, it scores 2-1. So if Alison gets this on, Germany will need to go through that cluster of balls, try and get that point back and win this end. Oh, too short. Would you believe it? What a chance that was for Levine. Three balls used from Canada. Should have a little bit. A lot to think about what we've got to do here. Canada's sinking. Just having a discussion. Needing that point, Canada, to at least take it to the time break. He has to smash through them, but he doesn't want to open it too wide. And it spoils the jack. Back to Germany. Again goes wrong. Will be Julian Kayabanu to throw next. Oh well it <laughs> went through. The gap and got a slight touch on the jack from Kaibanu. See where that's left us. <laughs> Goodness me, that was close to that ball. And then nudging it onto the jack. He's really struggling with these angles now. It's been hard to get through that pack. Packy balls. Oh, 
โอ้โหรองบอล See the frustration getting to him now. Can't let him affect him with this last ball here. Just focus, reset, refocus, rethrow. That's what I tell myself. It's taking his time. Clear my thoughts. You do not process that shot you just took. That's gone. It doesn't exist no more. Kaibanu, one throw remaining. Certainly having a good old think and assessing his options. We really need that now. Fantastic from Kaobano. He took his time and pulled it off. Another rotation for the ball. Been really, really good. I think Canada, no Canada. Germany just come up side here. Nikolai and Keller. Let's have a look. Screams and roars from all around the courts here in the Exhibition Centre in Liverpool. Some exciting games going on. And unfortunately, Great Britain find themselves 3-1 down in the BC four pairs. A lot of work for Stephen Maguire and co to do. And work for Boris Nikolai here on show court for Germany. Oh, look yeah. at that. That is fantastic from Boris Nikolai. What a response. Pulled out the bag when he needed it most. That was a great shot. And Keller's going, no more balls. <laughs> so I'd be happy with that. We'll take that point. And that's what they're doing. Boris Nikolai has done it for Germany. What a quarter final we've had on show court. Very close. Right to, the, right to the end, yeah. It was really nip and tuck all the way, and it was only mm. took one clinical shot from Boris Nikolai to win it for Germany. And uh -huh. full credit to Canada, they played their part. Those heroes gathered up over the game. He kind of fell away for Canada. Sure, Germany. A lot of errors in the first end with the lob shots missing. But they still held those points. Momentum throughout the game. Now they've got two chances to medal now. Two shots here. Have another look at the scorecard and you can see how tight it was all the way through. Only one point in it in each end. And especially in the Third end, the scattering of balls. No one really could take control. No, back and forth, back and forth. In the old same area, about three and a half, four metres also. Well, what a game on show court and results. Latest on court three, Great Britain losing 3-1 to Slovakia. And Great Britain... So far losing 1-0 to Greece, that's the latest score from court four, but let's have a look at some of the replays from what has been a cracking game on show court. Quarter final in the BC fours of Canada and Germany. And do stay with us this afternoon. We've got some one more fantastic game for you in the BC three semi-finals that will be coming up for you at 4.30.
It's a, fan been a fantastic day here at the Exhibition Centre in Liverpool. Three fantastic games for you and one more still to come. And we're going to leave you with a, another interview for you. As I have a chance to speak to Helen Nichols, who is the performance director at Bocce UK and behind all the great success that Great Britain has had in these championships and still to come, hopefully in the championships to come. Helen Nichols with Boccia UK Performance Director. We'll see you back at 4.30. Well, I'm joined with Helen Nichols, who is the team operator for Team GB. First day, how do you feel all the athletes have gotten on the first day, and of course, of David performing this morning? Yeah, no, really well. Um, I think these first few days of competition, you don't you don't win medals um, in these first few days, but getting through the rounds in a in a really good, um, confident position is really important. Um, nobody gives you a medal for winning today or yesterday, but um, you can definitely lose it. Um, so yeah, really pleased with how it's gone, and um, we're in a strong position there. Yeah. What's preparation been like coming up into the uh, World Bo Boxer Championships? Uh, really good. Um, it's obviously really important having the World Championships in your home country and that may never ever happen again. Um, hopefully it will, but um, it's a unique opportunity a bit that you really, you know, in front of your home crowd, in front of your friends and family, you want to win. And of course, with a lot of the GB athletes being top of their, of their classifications, how hard is it to maintain that level of performance throughout the championships and throughout the years? Yeah, world rankings, they, they, they do affect your seeding coming into the groups. But as I said before, you nobody gives you a medal for being world rank number one. Um, you've got to earn it. Um, and Botch is very, very competitive, even in the rounds. Um, it's a bit like Wimbledon. You go into the early rounds of Wimbledon and you see seeds being knocked out. It's the same here. You've got to be on your game right from the start. So we never take anything for granted. And we make sure that um, all of the athletes, you know, that's, the, that's their approach as well coming into it. You work for every single match. And a lot of the athletes actually have two games in one day. How do you prepare for that if they have a game in the morning and a game in late afternoon? Yeah, the coaching team will be all over that. Every single athlete will have a match cycle that they'll go through to prepare them for an event, um, for a match. And um, we take that pretty seriously and that will all be worked out on timing. So, you know, they will go back to the hotel and they'll have a bit of rest and recovery, a bit of physio and then preparation starts again. But they're, um, they're, they're, they're very good professionals so they can handle that. <laughs> Well, Helen, thank you very much for speaking, this, speaking to us this afternoon and good luck for Team GB for our tournament.
Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats.
Boccia comes from the same family of sports as bull or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 meters by 6 meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials. The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls. 
and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball's thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Russia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Botcher, the stats. Botcher comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Botcher Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Bocha balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Bocha, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we've got, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackball. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half metres by six metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. 
team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as bull or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their oppositions or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Archer is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 
104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, to the jack ball but unlike balls you don't alternate shots so like I would throw the jack ball then my first red ball and blue would continue playing until they get closer so technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown and then at the end of the end if two reds are closer than the blue it's two points etc I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. 
the sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams 
and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, 
If two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points. Extension. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Archer was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Botcher, the stats. Botcher comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, up through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication so there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the of the playing staff here rather than support staff play with um, leather balls so, um, they're quite soft yeah, this, we got, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball but unlike balls you don't alternate shots so like I would throw the jack ball then my first red ball and blue would continue playing until they get closer so technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown and then at the end of the end if two reds are closer than the blue it's two points etc I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. 
team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as bull or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 
104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we've got, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. 
the sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. 
weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or a system device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. We play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we've got, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jack ball. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball's thrown. 
and then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side, whose ball is not nearest to the jack, throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage.
Archer was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Botcher, the stats. Botcher comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Archer is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name's Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1, which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and 
the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable and partly that's about communication so there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls, so, um, they're quite soft, yeah, this, we get a, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, to the jack ball. But unlike bowls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jack ball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball's thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watch it to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half meters by six meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair, or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side, whose ball is not nearest to the jack, throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. 
Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls. In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 metres by 6 metres. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimetres in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes, in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia, the competition. 
Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, I, through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or assistive device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball, so they use an assistive device or a ramp and we have them bespoke made for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the, of the playing staff here rather than support staff. I play with um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this, we get, everyone has a jack ball and each team has six red balls and six blue balls and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackball. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackball, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball is thrown. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than boccia. They couldn't do any other sport. They can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, obviously I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave their legacy in, in this country. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympic Games in 1984. In the Paralympics, it's played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12 and a half metres by 6 metres. 
The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. Boccia balls can be rolled, thrown, kicked or released down a ramp. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sport assistant on the court and deliver the ball using the ramp. The sport assistant is not allowed to look at the court or communicate with the athlete. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. The aim is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls in each end. Individual and pair matches consist of four ends, whilst team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack, then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer to the jack than the opposition's nearest ball. Watcher balls also get pushed on or knocked out of court, and as a result, the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point each ball that's closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. Boccia requires strategy and pinpoint accuracy, where just one good ball can make all the difference. Boccia is a Paralympic sport and is a game of strategy and skill. But how is it played? Two sides compete against each other as individuals, a pair or as a team of three. One side has six red balls, the other has six blue balls. One side plays the jack onto the court and then plays their first ball. The aim of the game is to get your balls closer to the white jack ball than your opponent. The side whose ball is not nearest to the jack throws until they get a ball closer or until they run out of balls. It is permitted to hit the jack, your own balls or your opponent's balls. Once all the balls have been played, one side receives a point for every ball they have nearer to the jack than their opponent's closest ball. Individual and pairs play four ends. Team matches have six ends. At Paralympic level, players are divided into four classifications, dependent on their impairment and functional ability. Boccia continues to grow internationally and provide opportunities for athletes with severe and complex impairments to compete at an elite level on the world stage. Boccia was introduced to the Paralympics at the New York and Stoke Mandeville Games in 1984. Nearly 30 years on, London 2012 plays host to this event here at Excel, right in the heart of London's Docklands. Boccia, the stats. Boccia comes from the same family of sports as boule or bowls.
In the Paralympics, it is played by wheelchair athletes on a court measuring 12.5 meters by 6 meters. The balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball, weighing approximately 275 grams and measuring 27 centimeters in circumference. They can be rolled, thrown, kicked, or released down a ramp. The throwing area is divided into six rectangular boxes in which the competitors must remain during play. Boccia Essentials The aim of the sport is to propel blue or red balls as near as possible to a white target ball called the jack. Each player, pair or team gets six balls on each end. Individual and pairs matches consist of four ends, while team events are held over six ends. The red team starts the opening end by playing the jack first, followed by one of their own red balls. Then the blue team plays their ball. After both teams have played one ball, the side whose ball is furthest from the jack will continue to play until their ball lands closer than their opposition's or they run out of balls. Boccia balls often get pushed on or knocked out of court and as a result the score can change dramatically from one shot to the next. Watch out for the jack or nearest scoring ball being moved. At the close of each end, the side whose ball is closest to the jack scores one point and receives an additional point for every ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition ball. Boccia, the competition. Boccia is one of the few sports where men and women compete with and against each other. 104 athletes will compete for gold in individual, pairs and team competitions. These have been divided into seven events based on classification class. Athletes who are unable to propel the ball independently have a sports assistant on the court and deliver the ball using a ramp. The sports assistant must never look onto the court or communicate in any way. Boccia requires strategy, intense focus and pinpoint accuracy when just one good ball can make all the difference. Prepare to be bowled over. Let the games begin. My name is Nigel Murray and I've been playing boccia competitively for around 17, 18 years now. I first became aware of it um, up through, my, through my work. Um, I work with people with disabilities and I went along to a disability sports taste today where I first saw boccia being played. So I thought it was a sport I could take back to people I supported work with and that's really my first introduction to boccia. There's four categories within the international level. There's BC1 which is um, for cerebral palsy throwers, the most severe cerebral palsy throwers. BC2 are the more able cerebral palsy throwers. Uh, BC3 uses a ramp or a system device to propel the ball because they're unable to throw it. And my class is BC4, which is for any other neurological condition. The BC3 category is for people who can't uh, naturally grip and throw a ball. So they use an assistive device or a ramp, and we have them we spoke by for us. They also use a head pointer to release the ball, um, and the degrees of accuracy that these guys can get are unbelievable. And partly that's about communication. So there's a ramp assistant um, or a performance assistant who sits on the court, who's very much part of the of the playing staff here rather than support staff. Play with them um, leather balls. So, um, they're quite soft. Yeah, this Everyone is a jackpot, and each team has six red balls and six blue balls. 
and the object is to get as close as possible to the, the jackpot. But unlike balls, you don't alternate shots. So like, I would throw the jackpot, then my first red ball. And blue would continue playing until they get closer. So technically they can be out of balls before the next red ball starts. And then at the end of the end, if two reds are closer than the blue, it's two points, etc. I don't think there's a sport in the whole Paralympic movement that represents the Paralympics more than Boccia. They couldn't do any other sport, but yet they can't play wheelchair rugby, they can't do Paralympic athletics, they can't do the swimming. But this, for anybody with the conditions that are severe enough to direct them here, but they're sporty and they're competitive, this is an outlet for that. So I think it's, it's wholly representative of what the Paralympic movement should be about. Watcher to me, you know, it's my living, it's my, it's my work, it's what I do professionally. So um, you know, I want to be the best at it for as long as possible, win as many competitions as I can, sort of leave a legacy in, in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Exhibition Centre in Liverpool. We're right on the edge of the River Mersey, in the heart of the city centre. And Liverpool, this year's host of the Boccia World Championships. It has been a fantastic week and a superb day of action here on the show court and around the centre today. And it's semi-final time in all the classifications, the team and pairs competition going into the deep stages of the tournament. And you can just feel that atmosphere and tension being lifted every minute around the court. A fantastic atmosphere here at the championships, like it has been all week. And our next game here on show court it is the semi-final it is the bc3 pairs it is greece 
versus Hong Kong. And I'm delighted to say, helping us guide through the action, I'm joined by Scott McCowan. This one should be an absolute belter, and there's one man in particular that has had a fantastic week already. Yeah, but if I know Gregorius like I do, he will not be finished. He'll be wanting to go all the way again. And I would expect that to be the case. They're definitely the favourites, particularly after the way they played in the previous round, eliminating Great Britain, much to my extreme disappointment. But they were worthy winners and deserve their place in this round, as do Hong Kong, naturally. Yeah, looking at their runs to the final. Greece, they beat Russia, Thailand and Argentina in their pool. So three wins out of three for Greece. Whereas Hong Kong, they won two and lost one, beating South Korea and Belgium. And losing to Sweden in the pool stages. As we, we went through to the quarterfinals, Hong Kong, they beat Spain 4-2. And Greece, as Scott has just mentioned, knocked out Great Britain by four points to one. And of course, this Greece side have a lot of pedigree in the BC3 pairs. Bronze in Rio, gold in London. So they are certainly a well-drilled side, aren't they, Scott? Yeah, they've been uh, one of the best teams for a number of years. But uh, for a period there, um, into last year and the beginning of this year, uh, Gregorius Polycrates wasn't actually appearing for the pair side for whatever reason, I'm not quite sure. But uh, they came back together with him in the fold in Pavoa, where they became the champions. So not a bad return there. And obviously looking good here again. But yeah, he's so important to this pair. But Anna is a good player in her own right as well. So it is for Greece, Anna Intenta and Gregorius Polychronidis. And it is Anna who will roll the jack first. Yeah, again, I expect both these sides to go with a short jack and that's a popular jack position. It's almost all the countries in BC3 tend to play there. There are very few exceptions. And to round up the lineup for Hong Kong, second from the right, Yoon Kai Ho. And on the far left, Ling Yang Sang. Yeah, Yoon Kai Ho. Uh, very good player uh, in the individuals as well as in the pairs. Uh, she was the champion in Montreal, as we've already mentioned in previous days uh, this year, and champion in Japan in the regional event this year alongside Sang as who's world number 28 and finished uh, well in Montreal as well fourth so it's number one Polychronidis of Greece against number three of Yun Kai Ho and that's the perfect start for Greece A good first roll what a start for Greece in this semi-final on show court course we'll keep you up to date with all the other semi-finals going on around the show courts they were very consistent short earlier today against Great Britain and starting that way again and these two players for Hong Kong are two of the best at exploiting angles you see that a lot through this game I think you see Yun Kei Ho right back in the box to get that angle, to get that ball off. Very deep in the box. Well, he was hit with a lot of conviction down the ramp and it's broken away. The jack from the red of Greece. And he will angle now for Hong Kong. It's for Yun Kei Ho.
Just a reminder in the pairs and the timings, they have seven minutes per end, and there is four ends, just like the individual competition. That's right, and the ramp persistence in this category are not allowed to look onto the court or communicate with the player. They are essentially an extension of the player's arms and legs, and they provide the faculty for uh, obviously the players to play physically. And that's a looks what well, looks like a mistake there from the Hong Kong side. They had the, the whole jack to aim at, and they've ended up on the red. Yeah, it seemed to swerve away as it came closer to the jack. So not the follow-up that Hong Kong were looking for. And crucially, it's two um, balls from the middle player away, putting the pressure on the wide player now, who's got to come all the way across, and they're less able to influence the game. See that Sang is using a chin to move the chair. Yeah, see some really expert driving in lots of innovative, innovative ways with the BC3 players. So Yun Yip, uh, sorry, uh, Yun Yip Kim. Yun Yip Kim. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. This guy's been a long week. Yeah, don't worry, mate. Of Korea with the mouth pointer as well to drive the chair. Well, that's hit the uh, ball of Greece and actually hit it straight onto the jack. So not really the first shot she was looking for was sank. No, and this is a a bad start from Hong Kong. And the look on Yun Kei Ho's face told a thousand words there. You don't want to be giving chances to this Greece side, and in particular, Polycrinidis. Yeah, they will you don't punish you. You don't want to give the, uh, easy balls away. Ooh, and that's another errant ball. Just caught enough of that ball to divert it way to the jack. It was looking on track for a second and then it just took a nick. Just caught that blue, yep. And then bounced off the jack, it was too hard. And Hong Kong need to get a ball in there very soon. Well, Anna at the moment has got a perfect lie in between those two blues. This is exactly what Greece would have been hoping for. Will be Ling Yang Sang to roll next. The thing is that, despite this start, if they're still able to get a ball in there with so many in the head. It's still going to be hard to get it out again, as we see now. It was a good knock-on. Yeah, better from Sang, but still opportunities for Greece with so many balls remaining as well. That's right. The referee just checking. I think he's going to get the paper out to measure, see if there's a gap. Ah! Referee Henrik Wiffenden, who was a botcher player himself, BC1 many years ago. And sometimes coaches the Danish side. How all of Gregorius' preparation been like? Of course, he's been playing every day of this championships. Will he be feeling the fatigue, or is he still as fresh as ever? Yeah, I don't think he'll be having any problems. He's done this time and time again. I mean, he has 
obviously had that time out from the pairs, as I said. Uh, returning just back in uh, Pavoa there in Portugal. But no, I think it's something that won't be a problem to him. He'll prepare for that. He's just having the pressure on him. And the energy he would have created for himself and the momentum of that yeah. unbelievable BC3 final. And he's often uh, Greece's sole medalist. Um, so he's used to the expectation and the weight of a nation almost on his shoulders. Ball for Hong Kong. Yeah, normally they might be inclined to just take that red out now with two balls there, but I worry the way it's sitting now, if they tried that, it would actually open the jack up a little bit and allow uh, Gregorius in. Who hasn't even played a shot yet. I think that might be the better, better of the options to defend now. Well, that's Hong Kong played out in this first end, so it's all down to Greece and Polycrudinis and Intenta to play. Anna has already played one of her balls. Polycrudinis still three in the bank. Of course, Gregorius' assistant is his wife. That's right, yeah, Katarina. Got a great understanding, the pair of them. Yeah, that's right. They uh, obviously spend all their time together. That has a big advantage, I'm sure. <laughs> Anna's uh, ramp assistant is her mother. And she's building the extension just now. She looks like they're going to play. Full power here. What can they do to open things up? Oh, she's taken out the one of the blues from Hong Kong. Yeah, trying to drive the Jack across a bit as well. See it again. Done that. Everything so far so good for Greece. And I think if Anna can see the jack now, any of it she'll try and drive it back to open some more space. Well, if she can. And the three balls of Polychronides is there and waiting. Yeah, and as we know, the current world number one. So he's the last person. You want to have left with three balls? <laughs> and I can get this just right. The points are there for great shot. Greece and she's done exactly that. Fantastic. Look at the distance on that. Loads of room now for Gregorius Polycanidis to score, and this looks like it could be a four. Well, we've already seen it from Polycanidis in these championships, and it'd be a shock to us if he doesn't get all three. Yeah, Gregorius usually has one really hard ball, and that one will be difficult to slow down. So it's not a certain four. And usually what players will do is get the soft ones in first to create a wall so that they can not worry about the pace of the hard ball and send it into the pack and the balls will hold it in place. Good ball. That's two. You see there now they're in line, so that's a bigger target. He'll try and put the other one to the side of that, I think.
Still taking his time, Polygrinidis, even though he could be really racking up the points for Greece. So important to get it right. That's right. He can control it now because he's got all the balls. Knows what he needs to do. In complete control. Nicely done. And that's a definite three now. And he's got a massive target to roll that last one in. So clever from Gregorius. It's like he just maps it out in his head before he plays. Well, what a start this could be for Greece, Scott. Yeah, and already it looks a long road back for Hong Kong. Just not like them to start uh, as slowly as that, particularly in the short ends. It's a knowing look from Young K Hope. That is brilliant from Gregorius Polychronidis. Worth another replay. Oh. It's just so simple. Yeah, you see there, if that red hand in there, that ball was flying out of the back of the court. But that was all deliberate. No point making it harder for yourself. You want to give yourself the easiest shot each time. If you're playing really hard shots, that means you're probably not playing very well. You're having to struggle and force things. I'm surprised Gregorius didn't want to have a longer stare at his handiwork. Although we can't forget the important role that Anna played in all that as well. No, we can't. I mean, it was a perfect first ball. Opened things up with a second power shot. And then the cut on the jack was terrific. So, yeah, she was excellent there. Six perfect balls. And what a start for Greece. 4 0 up in the first end. Hong Kong have it all to do now. Katrina nearly tripped up. Yeah. <laughs> that. Is uh, Hong Kong to not the jack? Not seen a substitution too often because of an injured ramp assistant. <laughs> that would have been a first at uh, the championships. But it does give us a chance to actually mention the substitutes because obviously they have an important role if they're needed uh, to come on. And I'm having been a substitute myself many times, um, I know that it's important that they are ready to go if called upon. Yeah, the substitution for Greece, Konstantinos Masouras, and for Hong Kong, Wing Ting Lu. Konstantinos was ninth in Madrid this year, and Wing Tung Lu, 20th in Seville the previous year. And we start right away. The opening jack for Hong Kong, and it's a long one. And it'd be interesting to know if they would have played there had they not lost four in the first end. But instantly going on the offensive, stretching their opponent. This is when it gets interesting. It certainly does. And it is a similar position for where Gregorius won the BC3 final. That's right. Same side. Critical first ball here for Hong Kong. Oh, oh. Sailing past. Just not getting the speed right at all. No. And Greece 
now have the whole jack to aim at. But the importance is to get it in front of the jack, so then you can use it to promote, to hit off, among other things. You can't get too disheartened though, Hong Kong. There's still a long way to go in this game. They just need to keep themselves as much energy as they can and G themselves up. Yeah, there's not a lot of energy at the moment, is there? No, they look pretty pretty glum at the moment. And they won't be spirits won't be lifted if Greece can get a ball close to that jack. I can sympathise with them today. They finished strong against Great Britain, did Greece in the quarter final, and they've certainly taken that form on into the semi final. It's going to be Anna to play first. And as I said before, when the jack's wide open, it's a 50 50 normally for the players, so sometimes better to get the wide player to go first because they're more likely to be out of the end. And that's a bit long. Yeah, they've just not been able to get the speed right so far, but it's a better than Hong Kong's first effort. Yeah. So Hong Kong get another chance now. And they need to get this on now. Try and take the game to Greece. Just need a ball that is uh, giving them a chance of getting a point. Yeah, often the long game is a one ball end. Get it on the jack you're more than likely win. It's a lot harder to get a ball off at that distance. Oh, it looks better. Oh, just Ooh. too hard. Too much power on it. It was the right line. Yeah, add the line just far too hard. And it ricocheted off to the Right, as we look at it, the replay here, flying out the ramp. And nudged it back a bit for Greece as well. Hong Kong, they've been very good in the regional opens in the last two years, winning in Dubai and in Japan. 2017 was Dubai, 2018 Japan. Um, and they got that fourth. Montreal narrowly missing out on a medal there, losing to none other than Great Britain. It was a part of that side. And it was a good game, played well, but we just were a bit more accurate on the day. Looks better yeah. pace. Yeah, pretty good. Now the line's gone, get the pace and lose the line. Typical. <laughs> Not so often the way. You want one and the other one goes. And then you try and do the other and then the other one goes. Just have another replay of that one. Yeah. And the fact that the players are having trouble with the line, Greece might just elect to push the jack back onto the red. A ball behind is a hard one to deal with, particularly at that distance. Of course, we'll keep you updated with all the other scores around the courts in the semi-finals, as and when we have them. The semi-final in the pairs BC3 is South Korea against Australia. We saw Australia early on in the day, beating Great Britain 5-0. And it was a very professional performance from Australia. Yeah, yeah, they were the definite deserved winners. Oh, and they've cleared that ball away. Yeah. 
don't know whether that was an attempt to go for the Jag or the Blue, but either way it does the job. Makes Hong Kong play. See, it was somewhere in the middle, so could have been either. Sometimes at that distance you might even actually aim for the middle. Say, well, if you get part of either of them, it'll do the job. It's all about margin of error in this game. Yung Kai Ho will go next for Hong Kong. Hand pointer coming out again. And they've knocked it through to the blue. Pretty good shot. Nicely done from Yung Kai Ho. Nobody getting control of the jack on this end. But it's changing hands a few times. Yeah, no real, like you said, it's got no real control in this second end. Yeah, and you do feel put now with so many balls played. Whoever gets control first will win this end. This could be an important measure. You see the red and blue and jack means it's now a massive target. So you, players will play it hard. Hoping to trap it in there somewhere. Particularly the players on the right side of the court as we look at it. Because the balls are ankled, uh, angled towards them. And Yoon Kei Ho, it looks like, is going to play again. World number four. Two balls left for Hong Kong. Critical ball this for Yoon Kai Ho. And for Hong Kong, just to put some pressure on Polygranidis and Anna Intenta. And they got the shot now, definitely. Very nicely played from Young Kai Ho. Although there is a potential gap there for Anna to exploit. Yeah. Mm. Might be an opportunity for Anna to connect with the jack at power. Move it back because they've got that red at the back and the way the line that the jack would take would take it to that ball. But Kogores might think that it's a better option to keep a ball left in the wide box. He likes your tactics, Scott. Yeah, he's going to go for it. For max power as well, it looks like. Mm, that's not worked too well. No, it's just gone over the top and pushed that ball of Hong Kong's close to the jack. A look at this on the replay. It's moved one out of the way now. Put the other one on, but it might be easier moved now. Might be he's just tried to get one out of there and then they can get rid of the other one with the subsequent shot. And also still has that shot on the jack. It's going to be Greg to play. Well. 
Just turned it round the corner a bit, giving Anna a full look at the jack. But you see there the two reds behind. If that jack was taken back into the middle of that, could be lying three, maybe four if the ball stays in. But it may be that Anna doesn't have the power left with that ball to perform that shot. She certainly, is going to play though. Certainly would be a superb end for Greece. Another one to add. So one has been a great start. Yep. But they'll know that the important thing is just to tick the ends off. Win them all, you win the game. It's simple when you think of it like that. And if they take one from here, still be fine. But they are next jack coming up and have negotiated the tricky long distance jack which sometimes can go horribly wrong if you're only slightly off your game as we saw in that BC3 final and the line's gone yeah the pace wasn't too bad, it was just the line, like you said, Scott, it was just off target there. Yeah, and you can see by how slowly that ball reached that distance that the shot I was talking about was never going to be possible with the ball left, as we expected. So Greece have played out. Yep, so Greg with his final ball, which will be a softer one, is going to try and touch that jack. Oh, oh yes. what a shot from Polychronidis. Fantastic. Brilliant from Gregorius. Polychronidis again. Lighting up the show court. Yeah, and, and Gregorius' balls are fantastic at those shots, seemingly having the ability to be quite um, soft on impact but can still move things even at that distance, just moving it enough and then holding on the reds. Have Hong Kong got the ability to turn the fortunes round with this last shot? Ooh, Maybe. That, that could be very close. I don't think so. It just looks like Greece have nudged that, nudged a point. a bit too hard. Needed to be a bit softer to hold it there once the jack got moved. I want to have another look. It did look like from that bird's eye angle you've got that it was another point added to Greece. Gregorius uh, has seen enough, he's happy. Although he has stayed, he looked initially like he was going to go back to his box. And obviously the line judge, Helena measuring this. It's obviously Henry being a wheelchair user, doesn't have the ability to do that and that's fine. It's always great to have former Boccia players keeping their hand in and staying involved in the game. And I mentioned the other day how important the officials are at these events. Impossible to host them without them. Well, they've done a stellar job all week. They've been absolutely fantastic. 
dealt with every situation that's been thrown at them. And it's a 5-0 lead for Greece going into the third end. So this is absolutely perfect for Poly Grenadius and Anna Intenta. And now they'll be thinking, Greece, that if they get another point in this end, it means only a tie break is possible in the final end, and they know that only two will guarantee the game unless there's a violation. So that will be the goal. Let's try and get to two. There's a smile on the face of Young Kai Ho. not going Hong Kong's way so far. Yeah, and it's not the player you want to have the jack now when you need points. And we have a dispute here. The hand of Minky Ho's ramp isn't going straight up in the air. Yeah, the two referees coming over to discuss. to be something wrong with Anna Intenta. Yeah, she seems, Yoon Ke Ho, very sure of what she's seen. That's the reason why she might have been smiling. Don't know what that was about. But they're moving on with the game. <laughs> and you can see that Yun Kai Ho's smile has certainly swiftly turned to a bit of a frown. Yeah, she's really not pleased. Wonder what it was about. It's gone very tight to the side touch line. Favouring the angle, Polychronidis. Can he follow it up with the, with the magic ball? Yeah. And by his standards, uh, he could have done a lot better with that. Yeah, a rare mistake from Polychronidis. Just maybe allowing Hong Kong to have a sight at the jack. I think we'll forgive on that one. <laughs> He's been fantastic so far. He certainly has. He's provided us with some special moments on the show court this week. And Yoon Ho still looks very, very unhappy. Yeah, she does. Very clearly unhappy with Intenta. As we see the high ramp of Sank. Yeah, right up at the top of the range. It really is incredible to see the angles that these players get. Oh, she's blocked out the ball of Greece and opened up the jack again. Yeah, good shot. Taking it miles away. And that's the difference, so easily moved when it's that far from the jack. And taken right out of play. Just shows the extent of that mistake from Polychronidis, which we weren't expecting. Yeah, but crucially, 
they have to punish them now with this next shot. And it looks like Ling Yan Sang will play again. Both of them have a chance to go for this, but again, sometimes the best idea is to let the wide player play because they might not get too many chances in an end. Cross court. Looked like she caught that with her head there. Did look like it moved a bit, but. Yeah, it did, and she didn't seem to have moved it that much back. Sang to have a second shot. Well, it's close and it is touching the jack, but it is still open. Yeah, it's not bad, but not what you're needing. Anna has a great line in there now. does look like it will be Anna Intenta to go next. And she can now play it with pace because she's got the big target to hit into. Again, another example of how fine the difference is between a good approach shot to the jack and a bad one, or an average one, I should say. You'll be hearing roars from around the courts. Some real interesting scores. But one score that isn't very close at the moment is in the other pairs BC3 semi-final. Great shot. What a fantastic shot from Anna Intenta. That is exactly where you want to put it. It doesn't leave much of the jack to hit up. And it's right in line with the middle player for Hong Kong. Look at this. Superb. Absolutely brilliant. Using the blue. And her intenser. Oh. Just saying about the other pairs BC3 semi-final. Similar to Greece. Australia leading 5-0 against South Korea. World number two South Korea. Looks like a setup for a Greece Australia BC3 final. Yeah, that is a surprise, that scoreline. Oh, good shot. She could obviously see the slightest part of the jack and most players wouldn't have got that but that's simply because of the angle she can get moving right back in the box with a small chair and the release with the hand pointer cutting it behind the blue she did really well there it was incredible precision from Yung Kai Ho and Anna must be thinking <laughs> I couldn't have played that any better and she still managed to cut it back it's what happens when you put the top players against each other. You get some cracking matches and superb shots. Yeah, and if you've got the ability to cut small part portions of the jack, it's such an advantage in the BC3 game now. It's a good escape to, to have in the armory. And she crosses her arms now in satisfaction. Rather than frustration, Young K Ho. Can Anna respond for Greece? Mm. 
you can't knock the red on straightforward light because it's tucked in against the blue. So you can't get it straight on the jack. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was a tricky shot and she's made it look very easy. What a response from Anna and Tenta. Oh, that's fantastic. It really is a brilliant shot. She used the, the pace on that shot to take the red through the blue and it diverts to the jack. Great shot. Well, Greece are certainly playing some high quality botcha here on the show court. Yeah, it does look like the damage was done in end one, and Greece are playing too well to let this Hong Kong side back in, you feel. Remember, a point for Greece in this end would need a perfect score from Hong Kong just to take it to a tie break. You see that ramp of. Ling Yan Sang is almost horizontal in the playing box. Well, this will be incredible to watch. Now Sang does this. I'd say there's very few players in the game can play these shots. And the main reason for that is the release. It's very hard to get to that. Stretching right into box six. Oh, and after all that hard work, it's gone flying past. Yeah, poor one there. And it's one thing, being able to play the shot, but you've got to execute when you do that kind of shot. Otherwise, there's no point. And that's a good bit away in the end. It wasn't a million miles off, but it yeah, skimmed enough the red ball, but it this, was enough. At this level, but yeah. Interesting shot there from. Yeah, I mean, it's okay to play one shot and push it on, but it's too far to the right, that one. If it had been a bit more to the left, it would have been a lot easier to do. Because that's going to head towards the red if it, from that angle. Well, it seemed a bizarre shot with only one ball remaining as well after playing that shot. Yeah. No, and it's not had the desired effect. So Greece will have another point added to the tally, but they still have three balls remaining. And there is a gap as well between those two red two blue balls. But is it in the angle of Polychronidis? Yeah, I think you and Keho realising now that the game's gone and frustration maybe taking over, leading to those shots. And like we've said before, if there's one man you don't want to give a chance of racking up points, it's this man, Gregorius Polychronidis. Yeah, and Hong Kong have got to regroup because there's another game to go. Got to get back up there for that bronze medal. Obviously, they lost that semi-final in Montreal and then lost the bronze medal match. So they won't want to do that again. Tenta who went for it. It's 
very close. Probably need a measurement there. It will be Gregorius. As he goes to take a look. See that again. No, nope, just didn't hit it. Where he intended, he was trying to go in between the two blues to set against the jack. Just lost the line. But that's two in a row for Greg that haven't quite worked out. Surely we're not seeing signs of fading away at the final games. Well, look, we has been so good so far in this tournament throughout the whole week. He's been a real pleasure to watch. You want to respond here. Just a quick look at the scores from around the courts. In a fascinating game in the team. Brazil are beating Thailand 3-2 as Gregorius goes through the gap again. Yeah, and that's the the hard ball. He was so low down on the ramp. Slow it down. It's a very difficult shot with nothing really to hit at. He'd be trying to use the blue. And he just went right through it. Ricocheted off for another. Hong Kong balls around the jack and there's a moment for you to to note down three shots from Gregorius Polakonidis in an end that weren't quite what he was looking for that doesn't happen often no they've definitely got one of Greece but have they added a two to potentially wrap up the win with an end to spare yeah and the difference between one and two is huge here Two, the game's over, unless there's a mistake and a, a violation. Whereas one means the possibility of a tie break is still on, albeit remote. We'd have to see our first perfect score on show court. Confirmation from the referee. Just the one. So that glimmer of hope is still there for Hong Kong as Greece goes sixth and up with the end to go. But surely Greece have almost got their sights on the pairs BC3 final and as I expected uh, with a scoreline substitution taking place Konstantinos Masuris comes on for the last end and that's a great moment for him yeah, rank number 43 so as Scott, Scott said that is a special moment now for Konstantinos Masuris yeah, I played against him in the individual event in Madrid earlier in the year and he's a a good player, it was a tricky game I had my work cut out for me but I did get the victory on that occasion He must be so excited to have the chance to play alongside Gregorius as well Yeah, and the other substitute for Hong Kong coming on now and that's good to see great to see them getting on there's nothing more frustrating as a substitute. You go through a tournament and don't get any playing time. Even one end makes you feel a bit better. But obviously, Konstantinos is coming on 
in a lot better circumstances than Wing Tung Lu. Chance for Lu to impress Hong Kong though. And impress her teammate Yung Kai Ho. Yeah, these are the moments you want to try and take with both hands to convince the coach that you deserve a chance to start another game. Well, especially for Hong Kong, there's still the third versus fourth playoff exactly. for the bronze medal, which I'm sure she'd love to be a part of. Oh, yeah. She's got the opportunity to roll the jack as well. And to get our last end in the show court, which is a great thing to experience, I'm sure. Six metres for Hong Kong. Yeah, like you said, Scott, with the lights bearing down, the camera's on you. What a great opportunity this is. And Wing Tung Lu goes for the eye patch. We're lining up just to take one eye out of the equation. Some players adopt. Patrick Wilson of Great Britain, another one. And the line wasn't too bad, but it's just not far enough, but it's not bad. Shuts Gregorius out a bit. Yeah, started relatively well as Wing Tung Lu. Yep, and it's very difficult to come around as a substitute when you've not had a practice. You've been in the call room beforehand and you've sat at the back of the court till this point. Cold. It's very really hard to come in and start nailing everything. So we do have to adjust our expectations accordingly. And a chance for Konstantinos to roll as well. So the two substitutions kicking us off in the final end. And Yun Ke Ho just looks so disappointed now. Arms crossed, frown on her face. You can understand that of course. At this stage, nobody likes to lose. Good ball, yeah. Very nice looking shot from Konstantinos. Well played. He'd have been just as nervous as Lou for Hong Kong and he's started really well. Yeah, he came on for final ends in a few games in Pavoa. And there was actually a, a couple of games where the score wasn't as certain as this. Well, there was pressure on, he did very well seeing the game out. It's a good option to have, particularly in that final end of it's your jack, where Greece will go for the short one and just keep things tight. <laughs> Wing Tung Lu, I think, probably the less experienced, uh, with Seville being the only event rank an event that she's been to in the last two years and ranked 114 also going for the hand pointer release Landed very nicely for Hong Kong there. Yeah, just trying to promote the blue. But got the 
added bonus to the ball climbing over and almost landed in the jack but it was just too hard a ball to stay there yeah, nearly just nestled in there between the red and the jack what a start from the substitutes yeah they're doing well I hope. Takes it upon herself to go next. <laughs> Just splits them in front of the jack. Yeah, not bad. They can get it promoted now. As I mentioned earlier, Gregorius. Didn't play in the pairs in a uh, few events before Pavot and into last year as well. So Constantine has some has started a few major tournaments. Well, ranked tournaments, I should say. There's a chance now for Yunkai Ho to nudge that ball onto the jack. Yep, they could do that or looking at the angles now. Wing Tun Lu could play hard in between red and blue, squeeze their way into the jack. Looks like she's going to play. She played a good game against my brother Jamie and the individuals kept it quite close which was very good considering our inexperience against the world number two oh she's done very well that yeah if that had been a little bit less pacey it would have held on the jack probably but yeah good shot She'll be very happy with the start she's made in this fourth end. And really pushing the Red Bull of Greece away. Yeah, it was just way too hard. Otherwise that would have sat there. And you can see Greg's got a great line in there between the two blues to play the same shot as Wing Tung Lu. But instead of it being between the red and the blue, it's now the two blues. So Paula Granidis is first go in this final end. And he's gone for maximum power, it looks like. Oh, nope, not quite. Oh, just dropped it a bit. Yep. He's gone for the tall ramp, but... Down the ramp. Oh, yeah, oh, look at that. Fantastic. What a shot from Gregorius Polygrinidis. He's been doing it all week and he's popped up with another one. And that's probably the end over. The accuracy he's pulled off there. Is second to none. People who have been here all week, they have witnessed a true genius in Gregorius Polychronidis. And they've got separation, but it's actually beginning to send the jack back to the other red. Okay, oh, must putting too much power on that one. Well, to get the separation she needs to hit it really hard, but it's just the the actual shot is going to make the situation worse, at least in the short term. But at least now with the separation she can get in between those balls to the side, 
and you can see that both players are now laughing and it's easy when you get to that stage to just bemoan how things have gone for you. An errant ball. Yeah, poor. And as the adrenaline begins to leave the body when you know it's over, your level can drop off very quickly, and Greece aren't going to play anymore. They've had enough, and Greece are through to the BC3 pairs final. Yeah, and an end more notable for the. Good performances of the substitutes, more than anything else. And that cracking shot by Gregorius to win it. Well, he's made it to another final. He has had a superb week at the World Championships. Formalities there, just another one added to the scoreline. So we'll finish. Greece 7, Hong Kong 0. A resounding victory, a smile on the face of Yun Kai Ho. But Hong Kong can't get too disheartened. They've still got a bronze medal match to play. That's right. Have to respond again tomorrow. And what a day we have in store for you tomorrow. If you've got plans, scrap them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Just another look at the scorecard there. In total control were Greece from the get-go, a 4-0 lead in the first end, and there was no coming back for Hong Kong. A really superb semi-final performance from Greece. Yeah, and it's going to take a monumental effort to defeat this team in the final, or this pair, I should say. Well, Greece We'll be playing Australia, it looks like, in the BC3 pair semi-final. Yeah, what a result that is. We've seen a lot of Dan and Michelle and Spencer Cotty. We even saw them this morning put in a good performance against Great Britain. So that's set up to be a, a really good game as we look through the best bits of the match we've just seen on Show Corp. A great performance from Greece. But looking ahead to tomorrow, three bronze medal matches and three finals. And we have one more interview for you this afternoon. We have Duncan Tunbridge, the operations manager for Bocce UK. It was Stephen Jameson who talked to him early in the week. But that's all from us for all today. Thank you very much for joining us. And that's from all of us here, myself, Scott, Peter, and the rest of the team. We'll see you tomorrow as it's bronze medal and finals day here at the World Championships. Join me with Duncan Tunbridge, the competition manager here at the World Boxing Championships. Duncan, we've witnessed some incredible action so far. How much are you enjoying the competition first off? I haven't actually seen too much of the boxer at all. It's uh, more focusing on things not going wrong um, so hopefully when we narrow down the number of matches and we've got some finals on I can actually sit down and enjoy some enjoy some vodka. I know it's incredibly hard work for you guys has it been enjoyable to a sense that not much has gone wrong and you've, you've managed to do your job pretty successfully nothing's gone wrong <laughs> we've been we've been going pretty well we've been going pretty well um, I think it's been a really successful competition so far the athletes have fed back um, a lot of really good things uh, of some of the things we tried to do here so it's great that they've been receptive to some of the new things we're, we've been trying. There has been a lot of new things I know for a major championships the, the design of the courts and the fact that spectators can go so close to watch is something that's not been seen in the in the tournaments before and I know that's a, something you had a lot to do with as well. I think it's really important that each court has its own individual atmosphere. Traditionally, boccia competitions have had a group of courts in the middle of a hall together, so people would be watching eight matches at the same time, and if anything exciting happened, there'd be a muted reaction. But here, with the, with the spectators so close, we've, I think it's like a mini arena for every court. 
and that's only going to be amplified on finals days when we've got a lot of people around the show court and it's beautifully lit with the big screen above it I think it could create something really special. Well we've seen it already in the opening days of the competitions we, you hear roars from around the arena from different teams from different lights of spectators and instantly it draws the attention it makes you think what's happening over there and why am I watching this game and not that one. Yeah. It's incredible how you can you can begin to learn which particular country it is that must have played a good shot by the by the various shouts and songs that, that, that you hear echoing across the hall. And I think that really helps all the athletes perform. There was a pervasive view for a while that any kind of noise in a boccia competition would, would upset the athletes and put them off. But I think they really thrive on it. I think, I think that kind of atmosphere in the hall really, really helps take their game to the next level. And speaking to a few of the British guys as well, who we've been lucky enough to be joined with on commentary for, for, the, for the live stream from this event, they've been telling us how much they enjoy the atmosphere, they like crowds getting involved. And has that been the sort of feedback that you've heard and have just thought, well, we've got to try and really push that hard? Absolutely. When, whenever the guys have talked about a home competition, whether it be Ulster in 2010, whether it be the Paralympics in 2012, it's always the crowd they're talking about. It's always the reaction. They spend so much time training either by themselves or with the squad behind closed doors. And really they want to come to a competition and, and, and show what they've been working on and really, really perform to a crowd. And they certainly have managed it. What are we expecting over the final few days of the competition? We've, we've still got so much to come and we're still yet to see those, those finals lights, which I know we're so excited about. Yeah, I think, I think we can expect some of the class acts to really step up, step up now and, um, and push on to the finals. And I think it's also, in any sport, great to see new players coming through and surprises and upsets happening. So it's going to be so interesting to see, to see who comes through and who prevails in, in all those finals. We can't wait to watch it. Thanks for talking to us. Cheers.